It's not fair! 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 Welcome to the Deny Show. When we tell you nothing but the truth, the whole truth. Let me see some stars in the chat. I appreciate you and one of you guys for being here, man. Let me see some stars in the chat. I know y'all used to me playing music, getting up, dancing, having a lot of fun. I can have a lot of fun sitting down as well. You know, you got some of these people who ain't got no brain, no intellect, want to roast and gay. They say they starting to go for me to get Giovanna Clap out of jail. They say they getting Giovanna Clap out of jail because they need the content. I'm talking about the same content creator who ran Jaguar right name to dirt. Raised, did GoFundMe campaigns, raised money to get her out of jail, but ball, went to New Mexico, spent it on lavish trips, paid for their braces in their mouth on the back of a black woman. So if y'all want to go ahead and support content creators who say it doesn't matter that Mahogany was homeless and let's go ahead and raise money for Giovanni Clap, what are you talking about? You know why the Cabo 6 got away? Because of YouTubers like that. We don't support nobody like that. We gonna call you out. Every chance and every time we get. Put some stars in the chat. We going to the galaxy of the truth. We, we, we in heaven around here, man. All the facts are right here. I got it. I got the receipts. I got a call and text messages with the mother. You know, people are trying to bait the mother onto YouTube. And what I got... If she was going to come, she would have did it already. Because I'm about to show you exactly who she is. And y'all listening to content creators whose mothers, <laughs> whose mothers abandoned them. Listen, um, and shout out to you guys. Welcome, welcome. Make sure you guys get in here. But this is who you guys are listening to, okay? Mind you, this right here is a picture from about two years ago, okay? Um, this said content creator thinks it's appropriate to give blue clout and also to bail Giovanni Clap out of jail. Now, it's been some improving, but this person right here was 28 in this picture and his mama was on crack. And so she never took him to the dentist. And then he got adopted by two white men um, and, you know, don't even see his uh, mama because she ain't no good. So uh, for him to be from one part of Michigan... Um, and his mother, another part of Michigan, and for him to just like escape that feeling of being codependent upon and confined by the troubles. I mean, of course you're troubled if your mama was on crack. Of course your mama get your teeth fixed because she was on crack and her mouth looked like that. So she just, she was used to it. So I'm sorry. You know, um, and you feel like you escaped. So to say that Mahogany moving to Jackson Alabama, out of Birmingham, Alabama, which is about 30, 40 minutes away, is not like a change in environment and culture. I grew up in a small town in Florida, you know, um, especially when you're under 18 and you don't have a vehicle. It's like, ooh, let me go over here to Avon Park from Lake Placid, which is 30, 40 minutes away. And I barely went to Avon Park. Anytime I did go to Avon Park, it was to go past Avon Park, not to hang out or anything. So for anybody to think that Mahogany moving from Birmingham to Jackson and the importance of her having stability, that apartment in Jackson is like not a factor in her untimely d demise. Then we know Jessica, who did an exclusive interview on my platform and then went over to this guy platform because he baited her in the chat and we're going to talk about how people get baited by people like this okay jessica made it clear that mahogany was in the apartment and her untimely passing happened three four days after she had left jasper that was the last time jessica seen her and she basically was to be evicted from the apartment okay all of this is happening while she's homeless you know is is it ironic that the mother is going to get the half brother who's in the military from the from the uh, airport in Atlanta at the same time these egregious acts are happening to her daughter. Is it a coincidence that Blue said that she was out of town? Is any of this is a coincidence for the mother to say that she was driving and she could answer it because she was driving and didn't get the notification and time that came at two something in the morning and you didn't do anything later? Or is it a coincidence that Gail, since you know you guys see her Facebook, go back to, I wanna say, February the 28th or whatever, when she, uh, around this time, 26, when she posted a screenshot of her daughter calling her that Friday, her not answering it, and then on top of that, then her daughter sending a message 
You, oh, the, your daughter didn't even talk to you. She was calling you on Facebook. Did you block her phone number and the only way to get in touch with her was through Facebook? Why are you sitting up there acting like you're a professional realtor and the white folks feel bad for you? They was going to fire you because you can't do your job right. But now that you're grifting attention, likeness, clout, and so forth off of your daughter. And this person right here want to interview you. I'm going to let you know right now. Um, this person right here want to interview you, Gail Maddox. And before he can do that, I'm going to make sure <clears throat> him and his little minions do their research so they know what type of receipts I got. Okay? Ain't no, ain't no doing this for no click and view. Ain't no doing this for no money. These people just jumped on this when they seen that it was hot. This person right here is the same person who drug a black, mentally ill black woman named Jaguar right over the internet for two and a half years, trying to outdo another, con trying to outdo another content creator who got a million views off of doing a respectable interview with Jaguar right. So now he see me, somebody who he messed it up with a long time ago and literally just tried to call me to be my friend when I know you just like Mahogany Jackson's friends and you got deep mama issues. We ain't got nothing to talk about. How dare you call me after you did what you did to me? You put fake HIV... This person right here put fake HIV AIDS on me when black women as a majority are living with HIV AIDS. And his mom was on crack. That's why he teeth look like that in the mid-20s. This is who y'all... This, Gail, this is who want to... This, this person wants to interview you, Gail. He wants the clicks and the views to say that he's better than me. And that's why he's doing it. This is why these people go live around the same time as me. I'm the one... Who knows what's going on? I'm the one with a valid perception that nobody wants to talk about. Never in a million years did I feel like I would find something to talk about to articulate my perspective when it comes to us as a black community. Have I ever disrespected black women online? Yes, I have. And, 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 and because they disrespected me. Do I apologize? No, because if it happened again, I'm going to get body body. But don't think I'm talking to all women, all black women, you know, um, and that's not going to happen this time. I didn't react the best way because I didn't know how to articulate, hey, I'm going to treat you how you treat me because you're hurting me and you're somebody that I wouldn't trust and everybody want that gang up type of mentality to gang up on one person. That's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Gail, this person right here, he wants to interview you, okay? He wants to interview you. The mouth look a little bit better um, because uh, Baby Yoda, um, Jabba the Hood Cuz right here, uh, got some wires in his mouth. Please hit the like. Can I get some uh, 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 stars in the chat? How many people do I have up in here? How many people do we have up in here? But yeah, Gail, yeah, that's who wants to interview you. Because I ain't here to play with you. Yes. The mouth look a little bit. Yes, please hit the like. Drop them stars. Oh, my goodness. L. Allen, thank you so much for becoming a member. Yes, yes. Drop them stars. Drop them stars. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for the answer. Thank you for the super chat. Oh, Y'all making me feel so special. Appreciate you guys. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Let me refresh it. It can't be that many people with that little bit of likes. Let me see. Yes, can I get some more likes, please? Liking this video is the best way to support the channel, okay? We got our custom stars in the chat. We're going to have some more custom emojis. We are out of space. I appreciate each and every one of you. Also, take the survey. And when I give you the receipts and the truth, uh, I'm going to put up a new survey very similar to this. Did Mahogany Jackson mother abandon her? People said, yes, she feels guilty. And 85% thus far, and 15% says, no, Mahogany was grown. So, ooh, that's crazy. But, yes, yeah, she feels guilty. This particular live stream is not necessarily about if she feels guilty or not. It's really about accountability and having humility to be able to accept and take accountability for what it is so that we can understand what we do to each other. Again, I'm not taking no videos down or anything. I'm like Emmett Till's parents. Let's, let's let everybody see what they did to us. Let's do an open casket. You know, let's, you know, these days we don't even have the right or the privilege of our parents to say open casket or not. The morticians, they're basically closing it if it's too bad. So this is our new Emmett Till. And guess what? Black people did it to each other. And I'm here to tell y'all, take a look at what we do. I'm not here to gas and, and to pick and poke at other people, uh, principal suspects, lying to people saying charges are dropped so people are getting off, uh, ruining investigations. I'm not here to do none of that. Okay. And also when it comes to Giovanni Clapp to this dude, is he still on my screen with his glass? Oh, no, that bitch is gone. Okay. On uh, the Giovanni Clapp, 
Um, you're not getting out, okay? You're not getting out. You got two charges. One of those charges do have a bail on it, but the other one don't. So you're not getting out. In addition to that, the grand jury is going to indict all of y'all for capital M word. We already know that, okay? We already know that. And it is a fact that if it wasn't a passionate content creator like me, this situation would not have continued to get bigger and people's heart and moods and stuff would be completely in, entwined into it. So it's people like me that can advocate for the betterment of the community with this situation. And then there's other people that's going to come in and stir trouble. I don't deal with rats, fleas, roaches. They, sh they don't even feel comfortable coming out of my bushes no more. Okay. I've been here. I'm, I'm true to this. They wondering how come all of a sudden they're not found his voice. And if I come in his chat and try to silence him, everybody is going to tell you to leave him alone. Because I've been saying everything that I've been saying on my platform, okay? She was under 21, okay, people? Uh, oh, shoot. Let me make sure I get my pop-out box. I'm sorry. I know you guys are used to me, like, starting it, going haywire and stuff. Like I said, um, I just want to be chill, you know? And I also want to be more interactive with you guys. It makes a lot of sense uh, to be that way. So, yeah, we got the receipts. Um and again, also, uh, Rat Shit TV continues to copy my style, my flow, my content, trying to go live. He knows that I start my live streams and I go an hour, hour and a half because I got the gym later. So he wants to watch me this entire time to kind of like steal my major talking points and scatter his own subtopics and his BS around it and his conspiracy to flip it and turn it while taking and grifting my intellect to make himself seem smarter. Um, that's why the live stream that you did earlier at the same time as me flopped. And then you went live after watching my video. And now you want to go live again after watching my video to grift all of my talking points. So that's y'all King. You know, he had picked and poked at me. He told people and he brought this up. He said that I only made $200 talking about mahogany while he made over, I think he said 15,000 talking about mahogany. And so he did, he put this in the discord. He had one of his minions or uh, maybe even a burner account. This, uh, I've never heard this person, Priscilla's clean room. They try to op up with, uh, somebody who needs me for clout in discord and on clubhouse and embarrass me saying, I only made $200 talking about mahogany. Uh, I'm not embarrassed because I'm here for a community issue. And then he's telling me he has 115K subscribers on YouTube. He's not going back and forth with me. Coming into a Discord in an environment where the people that's interacting with this and boosting his head up are people that know not to play with me, people that I have packed up, and people that just know not to play with me. Um, sir, they're going to line you up just like they lined you up to brag about you making $15,000 talking about mahogany in Birmingham and I only made $200. So when you guys are out there sending cash outs and super chats and people trying to dog and tear at my name because I've been hot on this story and now um, they want to exploit it. Just remember that the person who had the most passion talking about mahogany only made $200 in one week. So please like this video, subscribe to the channel. That's the best way to do it. Send me a cash app, send me a super chat, become an all-star. Okay. Uh, I really appreciate anything, but without further ado, it's not going to stop me from delivering great content. And another thing, these people are stuck on StreamYard. And I don't mean that with a reckless disregard for saying that these people are just technically disadvantaged not only are they technically disadvantaged they're not spending no money on their platform you know and then you got somebody like ratchet tv bragging about what he got and what i don't got what is uh y'all doing what is he doing with y'all money that's what i want to know what is he doing with y'all money He said he do a YouTube podcast for work, right? He just bragged about making 15 bands off of Mahogany in the past week and a half. Um, he living this right here. He could be in a condo. He can be investing. Um, you know, I don't understand. He ain't got nothing to show for. And it looked like he had a pair of flea market Jordans on. Or maybe they Mexican Jordans. Let me see. Mm-mm. <laughs> Gregory, 
Uh oh, thank you, honey Sanders. I appreciate you. Thank you for the sex. Thank you for the super show. Oh, Y'all making me feel what? so special. Hold on, pause, pause. Hold on. Now look, what the fuck? Not you playing with me, boy. I would step on you. I would step. Look, what kind of, what kind of body is that? You know what? I would step on you. Well, y'all remember that alien that they uncovered in Mexico? Alien uncovered in Mexico. That just happened about six months ago. Let me see. Where is it? Tell me he don't look like this alien right here. Can y'all see that? Let me see. Yeah, tell tell me that's not his twin. <laughs> I to put some stars in the chat. We finna send him to his respected galaxy out in the in ob oblivion where he belong. Please tell me he that's not his motherfucking cousin right there, bitch. I'd rather look like Jabba the Hutt than it. You out of this put some stars in the chat. It's time to send him back where he come from. Back where he come from, bitch. Who you think you playing with? I told you, bitch, I will go it, it, what you want. Six months? What else you want? What else? Shout out to Hope. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. Thank you for the sex. Thank you for the super chat. Y'all making me feel so special. You know what? We're really tell this alien body ET phone. Put some stars in the chat, bitch. You know what? I'm going to put a rocket. I'm going to get a customized rocket and put it by chat. That's the new pack of up. We're going to put them in SpaceX and send them into Oblivion. And then when they get out there, make them think that they got some hope to live. Uh, and we're going to make sure they run out of oxygen right then and there. And also, we're going to make sure it uh, the machine implode like Ocean Gate, bitch. That's what we're going to make sure. We're going to send you in the, all the way out there, bitch. This ain't number pressure. We want you to implode from your goddamn bird uh, ET phone home body. They left you. They don't want nothing to do with you. Your own people left you on earth, bitch. Now you over here harassing me, talking about I'm harassing you. Why this man sent me a cease and desist notification? Telling me he was, he was, he fell physically harmed. Child, if you fell physically harmed, niggas be seeing blood, bitch. I'll run up on you in real life. How you gonna send me a cease and desist notification? Like I told you, bitch, you was better off telling your baby ass, bastard ass, half breed kids to go into the candy store and not to touch nothing, bitch. I want all the smoke. <laughs> Mm -mm. What? Doctor, 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 need your bad bitch. You better go get you a couple of transfusion. Cause them T cells depleted. Your body look ice cold. Like you not even from here, ET. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ain't nobody assaulted you. You got them medium pants on. Get that little boy back his clothes. Not at this who talking about he gonna go to Birmingham. You look, you look like Tupac when he had that body cast on, nigga. You big on. Child, like I'm gonna stop playing. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna leave him alone because I see he's special ed. He's special ed. He gotta be special ed playing with me and look like this. If you that little and mess with as many people on the internet and you ain't got no gun charges, you the police. Mm -mm. This y'all God and y'all leader. This y'all lead. This who y'all get all y'all money to. Saying he better than me. He right now he listening to me. He ready for me to drop them receipts. Cause he wanna talk about the moment till he been over here listening. Bitch. You, 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 you on YouTube from breakfast, lunch, and dinner, bitch. They say he pissing Gatorade bottles because he can't leave his computer. Y'all seen the video right there? We're going to bring that one up too. And why you, you we still want to know why you put them cartoon knots on that white lady face and you ain't go to jail, bitch. Mm mm. They scanning that bitch like which galaxy we finna send you to? You contaminated. They, this nigga's a real life alien. I believe this nigga's a. Put some gay lizards in the chat. He one of them goddamn reptilians. They trying to see if he the malfunction while he out here misbehaving. Not too, bitch. Them jazz legs you got with them Mexican felines on. 
<laughs> oh shit. Yes. Hook. Listen, we not, we not. I'm just getting rid of the roaches. We got it. Thank you for the fans. Thank you for the super chat. Y'all making me feel so special. We not get we taking the trash out. That's what we got to do. We got it's the purge behind it, bitch. Y'all want to talk about mahogany? When y'all said that something was wrong with me, because I've been telling y'all nigga the same shit for a whole year. Put put a star in the chat if you know that I've had the same rhetoric for over a year. They called me crazy. They said that I'm an outsider, a loser, but now they want to talk about mahogany. When y'all done treated me like mahogany. See, y'all done treated me just like y'all did mahogany. And now he is a roach that needs to be exterminated, sir. Please stay up off of my content. Stop watching what I'm doing and going out there acting like you're the author because you got a bigger platform. You've been on YouTube down there 10 years. Not me. Please find somebody to play with. Anyways, uh, please hit the like. Let me see what you guys are saying. I greatly appreciate you guys. Thank y'all so much for the support. Um, Hood, I don't want to get distracted from your original message. African Americans need to heal. I'm ready to discuss results. We will, but we got a ghost bus. And that's what this live stream is pretty much about. Um, the catalyst of it is actually ghost busting Gail. I actually spoke to Mahogany's mother over the phone, which is a recorded uh, for three minutes. And then I also messaged her previous to that conversation. And so what you're going to see from the text message itself, you're going to see and be able to determine how the phone call went. And also we're going to be able to catch her up in a lot of lies. Okay. So make sure you guys hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate you. How many likes I got before I go to this next piece of content? And speaking of, you know, protecting, somebody sent me an email where some young boys was going missing from Texas and stuff. Uh, black people go missing every day. Um, I actually, oh, oh, my goodness. First of all, I want to say I thank y'all so much for supporting me endlessly, to the especially to the other content creators. Um, and make me know that I actually can build a community of content creators who are not there for the toxicity. Um, Black Girl Unlost, shout out to you. Your content is dynamic. And I told her, I was like, listen, watching the, watching your content is almost like me watching X File. It just get or a horror movie. And it's like a it's like, I don't want to say a guilty pleasure because it's unfortunate results, but just knowing that is a reality for other people. It educates me as a black man to say, oh, if he's hitting her and it led to this, I don't need to even need to start hitting her. I don't even need to get physical with her. I just need to walk away from the situation because you never know how far you or the other person can take it. So I'm educating myself through other people's stories, even the situation right now with Mahogany. Um, so shout out to Black Girl Unlost who... <laughs> Thank you so much for always being. You're probably not here right now, but you've interacted and you've shared my posts. I greatly appreciate you. Greatly appreciate the other people. Um, <laughs> Baby Mama Terrius, shout out to him. Shout out to other people that are hitting me up and wanting to collaborate and wanting to build a community. Um, we're the all-stars, baby. That's what it is. Don't ask. I'm not a part of no more three sector. I'm not a part of the Jag sector. I'm not a part of the celebrity T sector. I can do it all. We are the all-stars. Drop some stars in the chat. Shout out to you guys um, for being here. I wanted to move forward and say that while we're talking about mahogany, um, we do need to not excuse the harm that white people, specifically police officers, are doing to us. A woman in Alabama, and I do want to say it was in Birmingham, Alabama, was assaulted and arrested by a police officer, a white officer. Um, nobody has called out justice for her because we're so focused on mahogany and I don't want anything to be lost in translation. All right. So when y'all go over there and talk to him about his music, do y'all ask him for his ID? Yeah, and he provides it. No, y'all do not. I'll be sitting right here. So while... this woman is saying to these white officers, this man is hitting me. Did you guys ask him? Are you going to do anything about it? Um, we continue to see rather it's a situation with rat shit TV. Um, we're kicking a white woman out with an unlawful eviction or these white officers going in front of any woman of color or any woman at all. It's, it's, it's honestly, patriotism is, I'm trying to feel like patriotism don't have a color. It's just a code, a certain code of honor. As long as this bit, whoever's upholding white supremacy and white control and have a masculine energy, that's what they want to protect and nurture. 
Um, so again, here's a woman who's saying that someone put hands on her and she's being treated like the criminal. Let me start it over. So when y'all go over there and talk to him about his music, do y'all ask him for his ID? Yeah, and he provides it. No, y'all do not. I'll be sitting right here watching. Nobody yeah. asking for I'm, his ID. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not arguing with you either. Am I giving you no? I'm going to jail. Yes. If You're I don't provide my ID, yes, let's do it. I'm not giving you my ID. Right, turn up change money back. This is ridiculous. Hey, turn up and change money back. You're under arrest. I need to put my shit What? Yeah. I, don't, I didn't ask for that. Uh, Wait a minute. Don't you put your hands on hey, me like hold that, on, dude. Hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on. This this escalated quick. How did she go from opening her door to saying, do you guys have his information because he put hands on me? Are you not going to do a proper investigation when talking to me, when dealing with me? Are you not going to treat me with care, compassion, and dignity? He's just like, you're under, like, I miss what she did to be under arrest. First of all, you're still in the middle of an investigation. So technically, you have the right to detain her, but you didn't say detain. You said under arrest. So when y'all go over there and talk to him about his music, do y'all ask him for his ID? Yeah, and he provides it. No, y'all do not. I'll be sitting right here watching. Nobody yeah. asking for I'm, his ID. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not arguing with you either. Are Am you I giving you no... She says she just witnessed the police talk to him and not ask him for ID. Again, Rat Shit TV and this dude right here, they have some type of... Uh, communion with the police where the police is completely um, oblivious to anything their opposition is saying. So either they, either this man is sleeping with these police officers or somebody in control or the whole force or he's snitching and working with them. I'm going to jail. Yes. Can I provide my ID? Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll do it. I'm not giving you my ID. Right, well, you, you do have to give uh, officers your ID. So... Um, what she said, she's not giving him the ID, is enough to um, arrest her. That's uh, disorderly conduct. This is ridiculous. Hey, turn up and change money back. You're under arrest. I need to put my shoes on. I don't. I didn't ask for. Uh, that. Wait a minute! Don't you put your hands on hey, me like hold that, on, dude? Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Whoa! 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 Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Wait! Hold on! 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 Mom, everybody calm call. down. I'm gonna give you please. One more chance. You might just call the phone and call your daddy. Mom, please. please. Why do you need my ID? I've already explained to you. Mom, just give him. Why do you need my ID? Mom, just give him your ID, Mom, please. Why do you need my ID? Mom, please call. Mom. Mom. Uh -oh. Mom. Mom. No. No, 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 no. No, you got me messed up. <laughs> Look, you act like somebody killing her. It took one white man to do that. No, uh uh. It's either you need to tell your mama, hey, listen, if you don't do this, this man is gonna do this. And if I react that way, then not only your life, my life and everybody else that you kill. So he hooping and hollering. This is why white people feel powerful. Because niggas don't know no better. Why is you hooping and hollering like a baboon in front of that white man? And he trying to do his job. And your mama is the one in the wrong. I'm going to be real with you. She's in the wrong. She's in the wrong in this situation. I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you guys the truth. She's in the wrong. Put some stars in the chat. Y'all know she's in the wrong. Um... And him hollering like this is antagonizing the situation. And that's what you look, you, you too feminine. How you gonna be a man supposed to be there to protect your mama when you ha ha and got her being more and more rally because you hollering and you ain't putting your foot down in the situation? You know what I'd have told my mama? I would have said, listen, if you don't do it, you, you take your black ass to jail, mama. You know? Me and my mama, we, we joke with each other all the time. So I say certain things about mom that I wouldn't be able to say if I was mad, right? I was like, you finna take your ass to jail. I ain't, yeah, you finna go to jail. My mama got more sense than that. So I never had to have that conversation with my mama. But him, he hollering. He hollering like he a bird in the tree waiting for his mama to bring him a worm. No, no, it's okay. Ma, it's okay. It's okay. Ma, it's okay. Ma, it's okay. It's okay, Ma. 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 It's okay. 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 What the daddy gonna do? Lord have mercy. Don't tell me she ain't having no jaws. Uh, anyways, let me see. I got some new members. Thank you, Passion. Shout out to you for being here. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for the friends. Thank you for the super channel. Y'all making me feel so special. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate you too. Thank you for the friends. Thank you for the super channel. Y'all making me feel so special. 
Yeah, shout out. That's bang. Y'all want to hear that? Just go ahead and join, become a member, whatever. I'm still going to be every receipt that I play in here pursuant to Mahogany's mom. That is going to be under my members. So go ahead and continue to become members. We are all stars. That's what we call you. So now I don't tell people if, if you like another content creator that I don't, I'm not happy with, I'm not saying you can't be here and there. Just don't be over here repping and all of this other stuff. Just stay out of the way. You know, stay out of the way. Let your feelings be your feelings. If you feel a way about somebody because of me, don't feel that way. Just focus on the content, actually. Okay? That's it. But anyways, uh, she's in the Bronx. She ain't got on no drawers. And her son hollering like he need a worm in his mouth. I'm, I'm recording. I'm recording. Uh -uh. I'm recording. I'm recording. Well, I'm recording. I'm recording. Okay. I'm recording. Why you want to rough up a female, Mom. dude? Uh-uh. He don't care. I can stand up. I how do you want to rough up a female that's gaslighting? Ladies, please stop. Please stop. Please stop misappropriating something just because you are a female and also because you are a woman, uh, which is the same thing, or because you black. Please stop doing that. Fannie Willis tried to do that, and them people mad at her in Georgia. Why? You need Jesus. Mom. It's okay, Ma. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Jesus ain't got nothing to do with you. Okay. Okay. This ain't nothing but the devil. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this this is like Carly Russell mama and Mahogany mama. This ain't nothing but the devil. This ain't you know that lady called me the devil. I ain't the devil. I'm I'm here to, just like she just called this police officer the devil when this man asked for her ID and she refused to cooperate. Now he the devil. Now you gonna get the truth and, and you gotta follow through, sweetheart. Ain't you at wrong here? I'm here to tell you, sweetheart. You wrong. Oh, she's on, please. Where the hell? Right here. Yeah. <sighs> Hey, dude, that. I wasn't attacking you, by the way. You know that, right? You put your you hands moved, on my you son. Back, you put your I mean, hands I, I, on I, my I, son. Ma, it's okay, my honest. I understand that. I wasn't attacking you. You good, bro. I mean, my son ain't do nothing. I mean, that's a, that's a natural reaction. You, you know what I mean? No hey, dude. Reaction. She hey. wasn't in the wrong? That's interesting. She wasn't in the wrong. The mayor is a black man. How she wasn't in the wrong? He said, can I have your ID? She said, I'm not giving you my ID. I'm still trying to figure out more to this. How was she right? Give me your ID. No. Okay. There's an actress I know. There's an actress I know who had a buzzing career. Very popular. I went to lunch with her. Then she has a white boyfriend. She swear she made it. She outside of CBS studios having sex with her boyfriend. Police pull him over. They ask for ID. She say No. Then she's detained and she's acting all crazy, hyperventilating. Next thing you know, she on NBC saying because she was black. No, the man said, where's your ID? And because of that, she no longer has a career in Hollywood. And it's unfortunate. Some people I know for real, in real life. They said she was wrong. I mean, I guess because it's a different state, huh? Child, please. Dude, before, hey, dude, before you take her away, before you take her away, why are you taking her away? Uh, she's right now. She's under arrest for failure what? to identify. So is this actually failure to identify? She literally failed to identify. Alabama. To identify. Is, I don't have to give you my is this actually an Alabama yes, state law? Yes, you do. That is not the law. That's against the law. Is this actually an Alabama state law? Yeah. No, it's not. When uh, when I'm no, out with you. Not. Only to have a legal reason to be out with you. If I ask you to identify yourself, you are then so. Can you so can you handcuffs? can you inform yeah, me? Can, can you inform me? Can you inform me how this like this process goes? Because if she, if you're if you're uh, arresting her right now, over failure. Let me the law all day long. A failure of ID, then. Yeah, I got y'all. Got you. I'm gonna put you. On. I'm gonna, we're gonna go to this. Got side. you. Got you. So I'm I'm, I'm genuinely oh, curious. <laughs> I'm genuinely curious about how this is going right now. And then when I start causing a bunch of um, noise, I'm fix these for you, okay? please, it hurts. Is there one in particular? And now they didn't drifted away from the situation. Where she, where I will say she was in the right is that she called to complain about being physically assaulted by a man. That's where she was in the right, right? If you if, if you in the right is self defense okay great but you can't commit another crime in the commencement of reporting a crime it is a crime to fail you to fail to identify did he treat her with respect and dignity absolutely not this is America you half the time you got to take your respect you got to demand it in situations and you can do that with commanding with knowledge or body language or intelligence or whatever you need. This is what black people have to do in America. We have to navigate this Eurocentric world. You know how many people I want to punch out every day? 
but I don't because that's not the way we're supposed to live. I'm reporting a crime. You don't like me. You're biased against me. Okay, I got to fight against that. You know what? We fight against it every day. Listen, sir, I'm not trying to cause you any problems. I'm upset right now. So please don't mind me being upset. I feel a certain way. I was just assaulted. And you know what? I feel like you're antagonizing the situation, sir. Can we have a respectful conversation? And then I can give you my ID. Can you respect me to have a level-hearted conversation with you? You know what the police going to say? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and talk. Of course they don't like you. This man, oh, my gosh, I hate police in this area. Oh, this is just domestic violence. I was hoping it was somebody to shoot so I could take the pow-pows out. The police is a human being, too. And, yeah, they're going to come at you like, Taz, like me, t tame them. You talking about that's how we learn how to deal with the police. Not even her son know how to deal with the police. Hey, ah, 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 ah. it's like next, like next day. If you was in the hood, somebody from the next door would come in thinking something happening. They ain't gonna do nothing because you know niggas knows it. Niggas like to watch and see and what body on the ground behind what all of this other stuff. They ain't gonna do nothing, but you're antagonizing the energy and the anticipation behind it. In it, and some cops can get afraid if you're acting like that in the process. So. My thing is you trying to get me upset and I'm trying to tell you that I'm a human and we can have a conversation. She did not, de he did not deal with her the right way. Did he do anything that raises to the level where he should be fired or disciplined? No. He just didn't handle her with care or diligence. And we expect the police to do that in 2024. Come on. Oh, no. So look, I'm going to have to take one off to get to the other, okay? Uh -huh. So... How is this process going to go? Because you guys just can't keep her in there cooped up for a fair of ID. <laughs> that makes, that makes <laughs> zero sense. ID. Like, logically, law, logically, man. that makes no it's sense. It's not no law. I'm at home. Hey, <laughs> hey, Dad, they're arresting my mom. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. You're right, so Michael. It, lack of ID. Failure of ID. They're, they're One arresting. second, Michael. You're right. You're right. You see, I can't be corrected. You're right. You don't have to identify unless you're suspected of a crime. I mean, honestly, anytime the police ever ask me specifically to identify, I'm like, you know what? I don't want, I don't want no problem. So I just do it. But that is a good point. A uh, cop looks like a daddy boy cop hired by the daddy. That's typical in Alabama. Yeah, true. Like, he's he's probably scared. And, you know, these cops, it only take them uh, a little bit of time to get certified, honestly. Hey, Denai, a lady cop reached out to me. She wants me to interview. Okay, cool. Um, no, that's not true. <laughs> Somebody please uh, exit that one out of the uh, chat. Please and thank you. That white man that is racist, uh, he actually said that white man, um, this white man right here, uh, I don't know if it's you or not, but that's the white man that said that it was good for Shane Quilla Robinson. His name is John Yates. He said Shane Quilla Robinson got what she deserved. Um, he's been exiled and kicked out, called the racist and so forth. So, uh, if that's not your platform profile, I'm sorry. Somebody trolled me, but I had to let my people know how racist you is, John Yates. Um, so go ahead and block. Thank you so much. Get you up out of here. This is a black person's conversation. So see your white self out. Um, I agree. I appreciate the content. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate you too. And I appreciate you for bringing that to my attention. I do, but you know, again, sometimes uh, the relationships we have with cops, it, we're in America, so I look at it from a lens of diffusing tension between police officers and black people. And sometimes, unfortunately, that can mean swallowing a lot of pride or putting yourself in essentially in an inferior position when you don't when you don't feel it's justifiable for you to be in that position. That's how I've navigated life. I've been arrested a number of times. I have no criminal record, but I have been arrested and stuff. But and it's because I know how to play these people game. And that's the only message I really want to preach. Um, because it's a game that we can't, we can't beat. We can't beat the police game. So we learn how to play it. We go in politics to make laws around the torturous, egregious things that they do to us. Uh, I want as many black people to survive when interacting with police. So that's my perspective as to why I say certain things. So, uh, yeah. And he, and he, he's arresting her. He ruffled her up and whatnot. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah, I put my hand so, on the So like they, they're, they're literally cuffing her and putting her in the back of the car right now. Sir, your daddy and the people behind the camera can't save her. 
Yeah, Dad. Hey, I have another question. When are you guys bring her back? Because this. I'm not bringing her back. But oh my goodness. For how long? Uh, she'll see a judge and judge will determine that. Oh wow. Over an ID. Yeah. So like, uh, where can I, I actually, where can I visibly read this where they say that? Uh, you know, for like a like, but, I, I but where's the man that assaulted her? Did he just tell y'all whatever and you arrest him? I'm telling I'm telling you. I know firsthand when you got these neighborhood police officers that on the force, these niggas that be going in and out of jail, they know how to spot a police officer like they spot them CEOs and the wardens and all that, like take dig out the ass. Mm, they be piping them down and the police just go ahead and listen to them and ignore the women. I want to actually see this law in Make play in action. Statute? Yeah. yeah. Pull it up. I want to screenshot this and every. Well, I actually have it recorded, so it doesn't matter. Even though I think it's wrong on. I mean, either way, because, you know, there's an old lady that lives right next to him. He's blasting his music as loud as possible. It's, it's not. <laughs> so, 15, 530. 15, 530. Yes, sir. Law enforcement official can request your name. Explanation of his actions. I don't see where it says anything about an ID. It says your name, address, and explanation of his actions. She would she fail to identify, but ID. I mean, it doesn't specifically, you know, say not, an not, ID. I know, but I'm not going to argue with you either. All right. Yeah, that's, he's being extremely petty. That makes no he, he's He's been extremely petty, inconveniencing. Like I said, he probably been getting drilled down by the man that she called him on. Logically, that makes zero sense, dude. Yeah, this this that just like rat shit TV did the white lady. How um, even in this situation with Mahogany, how the police went to Tasia's apartment three times. And because Tasia, according to Blue, had been having sex with the police, they didn't even go inside Tasia's apartment to check on Mahogany to do a welfare check or anything. So this is another clear example of, I, I, I don't want to call it nepotism because it's not really but it's similar to nepotism with the police force it can be on a sexual level it can be on a a, a relationship like a brother sister cousin of somebody married brother-in-law cousin-in-law or it could be on a level to where i need this person to continue to give me information about multiple people throughout the hood whatever um and sometimes they, they this is why a lot of them that be commit crimes in the state get caught up in their neighborhood with weed charges and stuff they go to the feds because it's a rink of them connected to so many different people in the police. It's like a whole nother world with these snitches, um, you know, and they just have power and privilege amongst the police. Um, it's Freemasonry, um, you know, so it's a lot of that. Goes Dad, into it. They're literally taking her away. But he, no, but he said he asked for an ID in the law. It does not state you, how you have to provide an ID. Well, that needs to be litigated because unfortunately the police officers have too much power these days the way they can just take you just because they feel like it, unfortunately. I don't be trying to inconvenience myself. Listen, one of the hardest thing to do is just to, you know, just to, in, my, in my head, I feel like when the police mess with me, I go back to the slave plantation and my ancestors just want to, you know, uh, or do a Kame, Kame, Hame at them, but I have to constrain it because I'm like, I don't feel like being in your car. I don't feel like getting booked, being cold, taking shoes off, getting undressed, somebody spending money, then going to court. I, you, you know what? You're not finna, in my, the way I avoid the police, I'm like, you're not finna get the pleasure of inconveniencing me and having me in the motherfucking court system. Uh, that's why I said, like, you're not gonna get the pleasure of doing that. I'm sorry. Because if, if I give you that, you win, regardless if I beat the case or not. You just took money out of people's pocket. You just took time, energy. You just took everything from me if I give you the right to do that to me. So why would I give you the right to do that? So when I look at the police and they be assholes, I'm like, you, you really want to really inconvenience me. You really want to take time, energy, and resources from me, don't you? Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I go to flirt with them and everything. Make them feel the too comfortable. They go to blushing. Get your ass up out of here. Sometimes I even go to talking sexual to them. That's how I get them in the head, you know. That's the game. You ain't finna take me to jail. You ain't finna inconvenience me. It was one time a police... I got pulled over by a police. This was like when I... Um, this was back in like 2016. Pulled over by a police. 
And um, I was walking from the store. The police pulled me over, asked me for IDs and stuff. I'm like, what is it? What are you pulling me over for? The police officer took my keys. So when I got home, I realized I didn't have my keys. And thankfully, I, I was like, dang, I got to go get my keys. Private manager opened the door. The police officer came to my apartment after, after he got off and gave me my keys. <laughs> Uh, but no, like the video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. I just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, please don't condemn me. I just honestly felt like, you know, it's time to like educate. I'm always going to educate and come from a stance where uh, is productive for us as black people. Please like the video, like the video. Can take, continue to take the survey. Did Mahogany Jackson mother abandon her? Okay, here's another thing. Okay, I'm from a small town in Highlands County, Florida called Lake Placid. Right next to Lake Placid is a town called Sebring, which is essentially about 20, 30 minutes away from my small town in Lake Placid. Believe it or not, if I got in trouble in Sebring, it was safe for me to go to someplace 20 minutes away. That's why it was important for Mahogany to stay in Jasper opposed to going to Birmingham, Alabama, because it was a different set of people, different mindset, and people just didn't cross into each other. So it's like think tanking, excuse me, yeah, like a think tank, right? But anyways, I say that to say that um, I love cr covering true crime today um, in Lake Pla excuse me, in Sebring, Florida, which is about 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from where I grew up. A man came into the hospital and unalive someone that I knew as a kid. Um, he, he sent his son to the hospital and said that his son had mental issues. Um, and he unalived him, his son and himself in the hospital. Um, I know this family. I've known this family for some time. I know the family members. Um, and I do feel like this is going to be another important case that comes out into the public. It's not necessarily black people, but it's a big, big issue of people just going crazy in mental health. So I wanted to introduce you guys to this. This right here is, uh, Sheriff Blackman, um, Highlands County. You know, he tried to he tried to have me arrested for practicing law because uh, his police department did not properly investigate the death of my sister. And I had to sue them, so they arrested me for practicing law. So this guy um, went after me before and failed. But uh, without further ado, this is what happened today, and I'm just watching this. I know this hospital. I've been to this hospital countless times. So, yeah, it's very local to me. Gotcha. I guess first off, my name is Paul Blackman, sheriff of Highlands County. And Blackman is spelled B-L-A-C-K-M-A-N. Uh, this morning at about 11.26 a.m., uh, our communication center at the Highlands County Sheriff's Office started receiving 911 calls about a possible shooting at the Advent Health Hospital here located in Sebring. Uh, our deputies responded, and upon their arrival, which was about three minutes, uh, they found uh, the staff here at the hospital uh, and uh, was located a subject in one of the what we would call a mental health room and in that in that room uh, they found a subject who had uh, actually found two subjects deceased in that room uh, again this is uh, just a preliminary investigation but what it appears at this point is a father who was uh, has uh, have, was having some issues with his special needs son uh, was up here at the hospital and looking to find some some uh, avenues of relief to help him. And uh, as the hospital was working through that, uh, for whatever reason, the, the father in this situation uh, thought that, that there was no answers available to him. He took the life of his son, who was a 23-year-old young man uh, with special needs, and then he turned the gun on himself and took his own life. Mm. It doesn't appear at this time. There was some medical staff that were in the room with the uh, with this with the child or with the son mm. and the and the father. And uh, again, this is just preliminary, but it looks like there were two shots that were fired in the room, almost in an in an attempt to get everybody to clear the room. Uh, they were never aimed at anybody. It doesn't appear at this point. Uh, and then once everybody was cleared from the room, then that's when it looks like he took his son's life and then took his son. shots. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Again, 
We we uh, don't know a lot about the family at this, this point. This is an open and closed case. Ain't no suspect, and ain't no the, the, both the suspect is a victim and the suspect. Uh, we are still trying to notify victim. the next of kin, so we don't want to Ooh. release any of the names to this point. Were they from here in Highlands County? Yes, we we do know that his residence is here in Sebring. Mm. Yes, sir. Is this you know when you look at the overall circumstances of a case like this, is, is it difficult to work at, at, as a sheriff? Well, it's always difficult when anyone loses a life, especially when someone thinks that the answer to the solution is to not only take their son's life, but their own life. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's it's always a difficult day. We certainly pray for the family, uh, the, their extended family. Uh, but also, I think it's important to to recognize the staff here at, the, at, at uh, Advent Health Hospital and the, and the job that they did and protecting everyone else because the situation certainly could have been much worse and they did they did a phenomenal job in protecting the folks that were here at the er as well as protecting their own staff uh, and, and holding everything uh, you know keeping everything somewhat under control until the deputies arrived on scene so i i certainly pray for them it's not going to be easy you know nurses and doctors come to come to work to save people's lives and they were exposed to something today that uh, is probably different different mm. to them so we certainly be praying for them as well the father and son are they known to your agency do they have any recent um, incidents that involved your agency uh, we we have responded to to their house before in the past uh, and actually we had responded up here this morning because of a confrontation between the two so uh, so we were somewhat familiar but uh, uh, that that would be that would be it So I believe I believe we responded up here somewhere around eight o'clock this morning, and then and then we got additional calls at eleven eleven twenty six I believe the nine one one calls came back. To oh, us. that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, he's not going to give us any of the gruesome details, as if some people wanted to hear that. But you know, again, um, wow, you know, I literally was on the phone with my mom, and everybody there in the in, in Highlands County is talking about it. It was some white people, FYI, no black people, ain't no black people doing that. If they did, I would say something that isn't awarded. Special, special shout out to Francesca. Thank you so much. Thank you for the sex. Thank you for the super chat. Y'all making me feel so special. Thank you, Francesca. She says, I want the world to know that I'm very proud of you. Great job, Denai. You've come a long way. Thank everyone for the support. Absolutely appreciate you. You came through when everybody was attacking me and everybody told you that I hated people or whatever, but thank you. Did this man help traffic you into Hollywood? Um, <laughs> that's freaking hilarious. Who is that? Uh, go ahead and time her out for 86,000 seconds. Thank you. We'll see you back tomorrow. Um, and no, that didn't get under my skin. I said I was going to say that story when I went to 100,000 subscribers. Kind of like how I told you guys, I was glad that y'all doxed me before I hit 20,000 subscribers. <laughs> um, yes, please hit the like. Please hit the like. All right. Um, one more. Let me see. Oh, and I'm also, a, a lot of this information has been sent to me via uh, email from supporters who send it to me and like me to cover certain things. And also, we got a Facebook group, the Mahogany Jackson Facebook discussion group, go ahead and apply to join. And I vet the people before I let you in there. Um, and we talk about the facts. All of the receipts that you're going to see between me and Mahogany's mother will be placed in there. So go there to get the receipts. Um, I actually go to my membership wall. I placed them there later because the receipts I got, like I said, uh, they're timeless. <laughs> they're timeless, golding. Opportunity receipts. Um, as a matter of fact, they're so potent. I'm gonna make a separate video with the receipts. Um, so appreciate you guys. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Okay. Thank you. Let's get to this. Shout out to the person who sent me this. A body camera. Police fleeing suspect that attacked. Newly released video action. shows police officers shooting a suspect who was wanted for the unprovoked attack of a 71-year-old man at a park. Prosecutors have now cleared the two Kent officers who shot suspect Paletti Anacasi Veniale. 
Officers chase Veniali on foot across a road before he pivots with a large knife in his hand, and one officer falls to the ground. At that moment, the officers fire at Veniali, who then drops the large knife he was holding. Is they really going to show this? I don't want to see that, but I want to see, you know. People are crazy. This is a I'm scared to go out the door at this point. This is what people are doing just randomly. He running up on this man, running. Looking around. Oh, with a... Somebody sent him. Oh, no. Please don't show that. Please. They should have blurred that out. Okay, they blurred it out. Dang. Why did he just do that? In the snow. With all them cameras around, you. Wow. Get on the ground. Get taser. Tase him. Hey, if he was back, it wasn't no question that you were gonna shoot him. Driven. Oh. Shots fired. Shots fired. Now, I will say this, right? He did an egregious crime that I do feel like his life should have been taken. How? I don't know. But he was running away, so the police should not have pow pow him. So for I know he did something wrong, but for me to sit up here and say that he deserved to be shot down like that by the police, that's like me saying that Stefan Clark deserved to be shot down up in San Francisco. Because this is exactly what happened. I don't care what crime they committed. It, you know, take them to jail. Let the court say we're going to electrocute them. Let them go through the process. So what you're going to see right here is the officer told his partner to tase him, but then began to shoot him while he was running away. And it's situations like this to where, uh, unfortunate for the public, the uh, family, his family can file a lawsuit against them. Seven, this is him. We're running uh, eastbound across the pack. <laughs> Driven. Uh, let's go back to the part where he told, he said to tase him, and the officer in front of him. Um, get on the ground. Get tase him. He said tase him, and he's running away. Um, there's a Supreme Court case in 19. It's Tennessee versus Garner, I believe, if I'm not missing it up where they basically um, allowed police officers to shoot you in the back of the head from the crack ep epidemic. So this is a, so they can use that case as a footnote to get away with what they're doing and to also pad police doctrine. But he was running away. He wasn't a threat. Police officers, they have cert certain levels of, um, certain, like you can't use deadly force. Even if you're just a regular person or police, you can't just automatically use it. You're supposed to tase him to uh, immobilize him. And clearly he's running. Uh, clearly his partner was a lot closer to him that he told to tase him. And the taser would have reached him. But this officer right here decided to shoot. So uh, this is a lawsuit. This is a lawsuit. I hope y'all are watching, learning, and listening. On the ground. Get tase him. Tase him. Hey. Five, seven, this is him. We're running uh, eastbound across the pack. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He turned around right there. Yeah, the minute he turned around, right there, he turned around. Driven. He turned around. Oh, he turned around like he was finna hit him. Oh, no, he's done. Yeah, he got exactly what he deserved. He turned around, and this police officer is hoping he don't get the hatchet. 
knocked out of him. So this officer did what he was supposed to do. So I take that back. That's why it's really good to pay attention to the details. But if it was a way to where he was just running and they couldn't catch him and they decided to uh, catch him by shooting him, that's a lawsuit. All right. I just wanted to educate you guys on that. Thank you so much for sending it to me, to the person who sent it to me. That's what I say. It uh, it was justified on the cop's part. Sorry. Okay. All right. So right now, a lot of people are looking at uh, Daniel Penny. Daniel Penny is the white guy in New York City. He's the ex-military. I think the he was in the Marines. And he choked out a young black man who impersonated Ma uh, Michael Jackson on the New York City subway train system. And one day he was upset. He was venting. He did not have a weapon. But he was upset and acting very hostile. Um, Daniel Penny decided to get up and choke him to constrain him and choked him for multiple stops so that he would unalive himself. Daniel Penny had a reasonable opportunity to choke him and throw him off at the next stop. They said it was between two and three stops. So in New York City, that means that Daniel Penny probably choked him out for about a good five minutes. Um, there were some Dominicans and other people who are not black Americans decided to help Daniel Penny choke out this young Gentlemen, we never know what his future could have been. Young guy, he's Michael Jackson impersonator on the train, but 2023, they probably could have cast him to play the black Michael Jackson in the movie. God knows I don't want to see Michael Jackson nephew try to pretend to be him. You never know. It's actors that go to Hollywood, don't make it into their 40. Denzel Washington didn't make it. In. Angela Bassett, how Stella got her groove back. She was 38 years old. People don't realize that it takes a lot of people to actually awaken up to their true potential and make it in life. So because this young kid was dancing on the train, Daniel Penny felt his life was worthless and not valuable. So he decided to choke him out and constrain him in a military Marine vice grip lock and unalive him. And a lot of Trump supporters contributed to his legal fund. They started GoFundMes and everything on his behalf as if the gentleman deserved to be online, uh, unalive. Jordan Neely. Okay? Just FYI. That's his name. Jordan Neely. I'm not going to be like Mahogany's mother and not say her name. I'm going to say the people's name. Jordan Neely is the guy Daniel Penny choked out and unalive. So there's a situation right now with the influx of immigration Immigrants have taken over people's schools, homes, moved in, even in the state of Georgia, <laughs> Texas. They're sleeping in the back of people's trailers. People can't even move their trailer to go pick up a load to feed their family. Not just their family, but maybe they're picking up a stockpile of rice from China from the docks to go and feed thousands of families throughout the grocery stores. That man can't work. Just imagine if it's continuing to happen to certain people. So right now, New York is very much on edge due to the influx of immigration. And there has been another situation where someone was unalived on the New York City train system. So clearly they're not going to show the incident where um, the New York police department said a man was, he was in the head at a Brooklyn train station, victim in critical condition and suspect in custody. So this suspect right here happens to be uh, either uh, he, he's some ethnicity. He's not white. He's not black. So I don't think race played a part in it. And I will tell you about that as soon as I read what this article says. Yesterday, as reported about a tragic shooting that took place 
on a New York subway that left a man in critical condition. Despite the violent nature of the crime, according to the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office, the shooter would not be facing charges because they believe he acted in self-defense. Um, he basically, this Yonsei Obia, whatever, he probably a terrorist, um, basically he shot uh, Dwayne Robinson in the head. So he's 32, a 36-year-old. After the two got into an altercation on a Brooklyn train, in the video captured by people on the train at the time of the incident, Robinson can be heard cursing at him as his female companion said, F your kind, F your race, F you. You think you're going to beat up cops? I'll beat you up. Um, the altercation quickly took a left when OB and Robinson began to fight and Robinson pulled out a weapon. The two then continued to wrestle before uh, the suspect grabbed the weapon and shot Robinson in the head. Robinson is currently in critical condition. Obudu was arrested on the scene but has since been released and will not face charges. Yesterday's shooting inside a crowded subway car was shocking and deeply upsetting. A spokesperson for the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office said in an email, the investigation into this tragic incident is ongoing, but at this point in stage, evidence of self-defense precludes us from filing any criminal charges against the shooter. So one of the top comments that I see from Corey, Corey is somebody I know from Clubhouse. He says, that's what he get. Only reason he was loud. He had a gun. He got shot in his shit. <laughs> now that's the funny salute to the dude who stood on business. So, and another comment says, he was harassing people on the train. His girl was taken up for her man. She stabbed him trying to get him off her boy. He then tried to shoot them, but the boyfriend got the gun away from him and shot him before anyone comes for me. I have watched all the videos from the beginning, and he was the instigator. Not only that, y'all know them niggas from New York City. What's up, B? What's good? Oh, you ain't gonna do nothing. You my son. That voice right there, I don't care. It'd be a three-year-old in New York City trying to sound like that. Y'all can't be trying to sound like that. Y'all might as well speak Russian language. That's the most aggressive language. And this is where we have to compartmentalize ourselves as black people and niggas. Okay, them niggas from over there in uh, Harlem. Um, Bronx and all of that, they come with a certain energy and a certain cadence. I don't know if all of them might be mixed with Haitians since they're over there eating each other in Haiti right now during that revolution or whatever they want to call it. So it's a lot of Haitians. We don't know. But I don't feel sorry for Mr. Robinson from what I see. I'll beat you up. I'll beat you up. You're telling that to somebody who cannot escape the circumstance or the situation with a uh, reasonable ability to actually get away from you. The only thing that that person could have did was run down the train and look like a bitch in front of all of them people to go to the next cart, but you still had an opportunity to capture him, to shoot him in the back of his head, to unalive him. You presented the threat, sir. You are, you are not George Floyd. We're not going to feel sorry for you. Um, I feel sorry if you have any kids that they had the audacity to even be born and call your dad. Even your girlfriend, I'm surprised they didn't shoot the shit out of her either because she was on the train running her beat too. And I ain't never heard a dove cry. And your girlfriend sitting up there crying like a bird because you started everything and she antagonized it. Ladies, y'all got to be a little bit softer in society. Y'all are supposed to balance the men out. When y'all get too masculine, just like that lady over there in Philadelphia, who I'm going to call probation officer, she keep on messing with me on YouTube. You too masculine. Men are not attracted to that. You keep on harassing and piggybacking and aiding and abating a man's toxic behavior does not make you more desirable. Okay? Niggas can't even get hard after that. They might as well go to prison to lay up with the men if they want y'all to be that hard. I'll get a BBL. They both smell like Dookie, according to Cardi B. But yeah, he was the aggressor. I don't feel bad for him. I don't care what people say. And oh, he was the aggressor. He was the aggressor. I Listen, people talking about doxing me, right? And I've said it time and time again. If you come to my front door, I don't care if you came with a bouquet of roses or if you came with a box of cereal. I'm going to thank you trying to do me how Vivica A. Fox tried to do Uma Thurman and Kill Bill. Well, you trying, you got a gun in a box of cereal. You trying to shoot me. So I'm going to be on my balcony and spray you and hit you with something. And I'm going to hope that that bullet drill you as if it's a some hot lead being thrown from the Statue of Liberty on top of your head for playing with me in real life. So I don't blame this man for Popeye him. I would have shot him too. Not you with that big Brooklyn booming voice sounding like a Brooklyn alligator. And you going to do something. I would have been scared. Ooh, I'm a, let, me, let me play this again. I'm going to beat you up. 
Like, look how he came at this dude. He deserved everything he got. Just like, the, uh, watch this. Listen to this. Oh, no, no, no. I'm giving him a second. Every time he said I'll beat you up, I just seen some cartoon nuts. Ain't no bricks around, ain't no bottles, ain't no sticks, and this man got a pow pow. <laughs> he deserved what he got. I'm sorry. All right, please hit the like, please hit the like. We're getting closer and closer. Like I told you guys, I got them exclusive receipts that y'all are waiting for. You know, I'm like, we're going to see what happened this weekend, who pop up and who don't do this and this. Um, did Mahogany Jackson mother abandon her? Mm, please continue to take the survey. Please like the video, like the video, like this video. Great, they appreciate you guys. Um, LL, you ain't never lied. Bronx, New York in the house. I just live here, not a part of the mess. Thank you, darling. You know what I'm talking about. He coming up there like he gonna bark and bite somebody. You got me messed up. Oh. Messed up. All right, please continue to hit the like and subscribe to the channel. Y'all want these receipts? We got it. We got it. Pay me back with a like, with a subscribe. You know, um, child, look at this. Child, this is right here in back. I can't even show my face on Clubhouse for at least not this weekend. They picking and poking at me because Rat Shit TV went over there and told them that he's made $15,000 off of Talking About Mahogany and I ain't made number $200. And he waiting for me to drop my receipt so he can get him a lit live stream, grifting off of me, want to be disrespectful, know for a fact that I'm the person who got the exclusive interview with Jessica. As a matter of fact, to prove that I got the exclusive interview with Jessica, let me go ahead and pull up this receipt for those of y'all who are confused as far as who are the grifters and who is not. And then he still ain't getting no goddamn receipts. They got the receipts from uh, Blue with her mustache. I don't want that to touch my motherfucking platform. A lot of times, a lot of these so-called content creators are not intelligent enough. They got to trick people, trick people like Jessica into, uh, you know, um, giving them exclusive content to feel like they're somehow in competition with me. So, uh, Mahogany Mama, please pay attention to what I'm finna show you because them niggas is waiting for you to click a link. They waiting for me to drop my receipts to go ahead and sell your dead daughter out like how you did her and hoping that you would click their link and I'm going to give y'all both a reason to get it packing. Um, but, you know, uh, Jessica gave me the exclusive interview. Those that don't have any intellect and think that because they got bigger platforms and can sit there and not really put work into their craft that they can bait y'all from the chat. Jessica fell victim to that. And I maybe should have warned her, hey, you're on my platform. These are the content creators They're They don't have any emotional, empathetic ties to mahogany. And Jessica, if you're listening, you can go and look at what you did with me and go look at what you did with the other person. They're going to try to bait you to their platform in order to get content, in order to kind of like act as if they're validated or relevant in the situation when they're not, right? So this is what Jessica told me. I don't know. When I said, uh, yeah, I said, Sean David, he's trying to fight with me. He's like Mahogany's friends. She said, I didn't know. He accused me of being blue on a fake account because I corrected him when he said that Mahogany was this big time hustler with a lot of money and that played a role in it because she was unemployed and struggling. So he's going to say things like that to trigger and to troll you because that's what it was. And now he knows I have exclusive receipts about the mother. He's going to say things to trigger and troll the mother to get... I guess to, to play the opposition of what's going on over here so that he can get content. That's how you know a grifter. And then on top of that, he has no, he don't even care. He hate his own mama. His own mama was on, his mother is worse than Mahogany's mother. 
So he don't care about none of this. He don't care about exposing the truth and telling the truth. So <clears throat> Jessica was grifted out of her time and attention and energy. And I don't know what this means, but Mahogany had a car up until around November. She had a red Honda Accord that suddenly disappeared when I would ask her about it. She told me that she chose to put it at her aunt's house so she could force herself to stay home and keep to herself. But I feel like there might have been more to it than that. I don't know. I didn't know you did everything and you did what you do. And I can't confirm or deny anything because I have children here. But I appreciate you for speaking for Mahogany and not trying to be the prosecutor, the judge, or the jury because she's a real person that I, I really loved and cared for. But my hands are tied on what I can say. So as we segue into the receipts from Mahogany's mother, she said, Mahogany had a car in November. Remember, all of this, this downfall of Mahogany took place late November, December. She had a Honda Accord that suddenly disappeared when I asked her about it. She told me that she chose to put it at her aunt's house so she can force herself to stay home and keep to herself. But I got receipts of Jessica, of Mahogany calling Jessica about 10, 15 times getting mad that she couldn't even go to the store down the road. So it says to me that something Mahogany's mother, Gail Maddox Trotter, a.k.a. CBF wannabe wife, decided to take her car in talking about give it to her aunt or put it at her aunt's house. Who's at her aunt's house around her age? Her cousin. The same cousins that Gail got on TV said that she was trying, she was just getting to know and trying to get close to. Gail is such a narcissist to where she'd rather abandon the people in her household and take from them to do to other people just to uphold her reputation. And so upon information and belief, Gail took Mahogany's car and gave it to her cousin, the same cousin that supposedly had her back, that she was supposedly be staying with and staying out of the streets and getting close to if it was at her aunt's house. So Mahogany's mom deprived her daughter of a vehicle and gave it to her cousin because she wants to be the great auntie. She wants to be the great Christian to the public, but all of your kids have to look and see how evil and nasty you are. You deprive them to give to other people just to uphold a reputation. How do I know that? A lot of our mothers are just like that. And we got to play along into it, which is exactly why Mahogany was like, oh yeah, I gave it to my auntie because I want to control myself staying home and not rip and run the streets or go to the grocery store, even though I'm going to blow your phone up, Jessica, and get mad at you. Because I need to go to the store and I want to go to the store right now. She was so wild and out of control. This is how us as kids sacrifice our own reputation, our own likeness and how people view us for the benefit of our parents. So upon information and belief, Gail gave her car to the auntie, to the cousin, to the champion and be the great auntie or the great person that everybody loved. And if you go back to her posting on her Instagram, I mean, she's not going to delete it. The substance of her fame on Facebook, those viral posts, how she posted and somebody tagged her and said, Gail, no matter what it was, you matter of fact, let me go to it. Let me go to it. Let me show you a narcissist when I see one. Let me go to it. Mm-hmm. Got Trotter, Gail Maddox Trotter. Let me go to it. You getting brand deals. You closing on houses that them white folks don't want from you. They don't care. Probably termites and everything in them bitches. You posting your granddaughter when you gave your granddaughter away because you want everybody in the world on social media to believe that you have your granddaughter. Why, why, do you, why are you paying homage to your granddaughter and your daughter when you gave your granddaughter away? You don't have custody of your granddaughter. Why do you even have a fund set up for your granddaughter as if you're the face of this campaign while your granddaughter is in the custody of your son, the same way your granddaughter's last name is Maddox, even though Mahogany's last name is Jackson. Your daughter had a baby when she was 15, 16 years old, and you signed the birth certificate so you can grift the welfare system. That's the same way you're trying to grift off of your granddaughter who's right here. If you guys can see that, that's our granddaughter right there. On a plane with Mahogany's half-brother, 
to go and live a life with his brother and them four days ago that was posted. And you still posting pictures and having the news mainstream media saying that you're collecting money on behalf of your granddaughter. So I'm going to tell you again, Gail, before I dissect you, this dude right here. Okay, let me let me say you some time. This dude right here, this dude and got packed up by me by seven, eight months straight. And he don't want no mother must smoke. So he's the one who's feeding up into your bullshit because his mama was on crack and sold him to two white men that she owes some money. And they got a John Wayne Gacy van over there. Okay. So this right here, he wants to interview you. He's the one feeding into your crap. He's the one putting a phone number to call and to send money and support you. He's the one probably calling you, grifting energy attention off of you because he wants to click in the view. He wants to outdo me. This is about a click in the view for him, not getting to the truth. People going to click and view. I can't stop that. But I really going to support somebody like this. Somebody that's going to fuel and propagate your BS. He's the one who did it. Please make sure you let him know that you gave away your daughter car or something happened in your daughter car. Whatever excuse you're going to give, just like them excuses you try to give me before you realize that I'm too smart to be manipulated, girl. Girl, I got every motherfucking... I squeeze the tea out of you like a beet juice girl. Ain't no need for you to testify because when you do go over there, it's going to be just like a whole nother situation where I got to protect the dead woman or woman that can't protect herself against these roaches and trolls on YouTube. And on top of that, they're ruining the criminal investigation. This dude right here, this dude right here want to bond out Giovanni Clap for some clicks and views. He want to bond out Giovanni Claps for some clicks and views. That's what they want to do. And your mama on crack. And your mama didn't get your teeth fixed at all. She had to sell you to two white men who put braces in your mouth. Broke ass cracker. They couldn't put no veneers in your mouth. Cheese. <laughs> oh, anyways. Uh, yeah. So let's get back into. I want to show you guys a narcissist. Okay. A classic narcissist. All right. Okay. This right here is edited. This long text message. I already broke that down in the previous video. If you don't believe me, just ask me. I'm pretty sure y'all, everybody here that's watching this have been following me. Break this down. I don't feel like going backwards. The only time I will go backwards is to correct one of these losers who's spreading misinformation or defaming mahogany throughout her untimely passing just so that they can get the mother on their platform because it's about a click and view for them. Okay. All right, let's see. Six days ago. No, we got to go back, 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 back. We got to go back. I'm going to give y'all these receipts. You got, like, you know, you got to you gotta be specific with these clout chasers. Y'all see this gay bishop, the same gay bishop that forced her on camera to do a video on Facebook to chase some clout? The same bishop that's all over the place that lied and that read out a fake eulogy. Love that read out a fake eulogy on behalf of Mahogany. Knowing damn well that the mama edited that. Okay, let's get to it. This girl, I'm sorry to say this. Please forgive me. I'm not saying this. I say this with kindness, due diligence, and love. Um, there's something wrong with this child. This child uh, needs special attention. Um, this child don't have a mother. I don't even think this child fully comprehends what's going on. Um, she needs her mother. Nobody's going to love this child like her mother. And Gail knew that, which is why she signed this baby birth certificate. Because my mahogany was her baby. And, you know, she had already had five other kids. You know, she getting older. She's still trying to survive. How can I give time, attention, like what you're doing off of your dead daughter? Or even DCF checks and stuff. Let me sign the birth certificate of her daughter so that I can always control her. Because I know she loves her daughter. And as long as I got her daughter in a tyrannical position, in a tyrannical situation then she is going to forever need me and be forever in debt to me. So, Gail, when you go and do the interview with that baby Yoda, uh, we want to know, did you sign this baby birth certificate? And if not, why did Mahogany Jackson name her daughter Maddox? Please answer that, okay? <sighs> Y'all like, oh, no, they're not. You getting on the money. No, this needs that. What I'm doing is necessary for the entire community. You know how many women, you know how many men out there looking at you saying, that reminds me of my mama, my grandma. Yeah, you right. You, you want attention. You want to grip off your daughter. We're going to give you the attention that you're looking for. Only difference is you can't control the narrative. 
You can't. Just because you got a bigger platform and this person got a bigger platform, you want to control the narrative. Now, look at this right here. Look. This was posted on March the 1st, right? Follow me, y'all. Follow me. This posted on March the 1st. It says, anytime I called, you would answer. And if you didn't answer, you would send me a text. You have always been there for me with open arms. Seeing you like that yesterday broke me. You have always been strong and always given me good advice on handling my business. I was younger and moved down here. And after my grandfather passed, you welcomed me in your home. You was like a mom to me. You definitely the best godmother ever. Even in my adult life, you still just a phone call away. Love you and thanks for being you. Now let's dissect this. Anytime you call, you would answer. And if you didn't answer me, you would send a text. You've always been there with me for open arms, right? So let's go down here. When she claimed to be, and y'all remember uh, Vito said, y'all going at me, but the family been hitting me up saying, don't come at us, look at the mama. The mama kicked her out and the mama neglected her. So that was a complete stranger, a goddaughter, somebody she probably met at the church that she wanted to impress, wanted to believe she's mother of the year. Mother of the year, right? And look at the gaslighting, right? This is what she wanted everybody to believe. First of all, and I've already broken this down, but y'all got to follow me because I'm finna get into the juicy juice, okay? Your daughter called you. I don't see no text message where you write her back or acknowledging her call. And then she allegedly wrote you all of this with proper grammar. And we've seen the receipts of Mahogany not having proper grammar. So maybe some adult helped her out. But then, Gail, yeah, if this was screenshotted from you, and there's a scene right there. Um, why did you cut out what you sent that told you that monog Mahogany sent it? Or if that's not true, then this whole message is fake. This whole message is fake. Okay? Whole message is fake. What did you see? What did Mahogany see? You had to message her to say seen, not just her messaging you all by herself with them long messages and calling you and you still didn't answer. Mind you, that was on December, right? So when Gail posted this, Lord, this hurt so bad. She said, Lord, this hurt so bad. The screenshot says 754. And she's on the phone for a minute and nine seconds thus far. Your daughter was calling you Friday the 23rd, one, two, three, four times. It's a stranger or somebody that you call your godchild was able to get a text message from you or you would answer any time they would call. But you sent us a screenshot telling us that you ignored your daughter on multiple occasions, including but it's not limited to when she said call the police. She said call the police at 7.46 a.m. You took the screenshot at 7.55 a.m. Where is it? And then on top of that, you posted this February the 28th at 7.01 a.m. So if this 7.46 a.m., you posted this a whole 24 hours later. What did you have to do with your daughter disappearing since you got the message at 7.46 a.m. and saw it at 7.54? You seen that shit within 10 minutes. And now I hurt you the next day, 24 hours later, after you ignored her Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday took a screenshot of it for your records. 7.54. Hell, let's say it was p.m. That means you seen the message that she was calling you 12 hours after she called you and then you posted it an additional 12 hours. That's giving you the benefit of the doubt. But y'all supposed to believe that she was there for her goddaughter and she would do anything for the community. There's plenty of us know that our mothers, our parents, our grandparents are pieces of shit behind closed doors. Allow SA, allow mental abuse, emotional abuse, neglect, generational curses, but go out in the public and act like this shit don't stink. I'm tired of y'all wicked Negroes. I just had to cuss my mom out before I came online. Me and my mama got to understand that she know I'm going to cuss out about this shit. She know it don't affect me, so she, she don't lie to me no more. She knows she a wicked Negro, and I'm going to tell her that. And you know what? I've accepted it. So you got to accept it to be able to move forward. And because I've accepted it, me and my mama, we can move forward. I got my mama doing things that she ain't never do because I done held her accountable. She didn't cuss me out. She, my mama done threatened to cut me from A to Z so many times. And you know what I told her? You take your black ass to jail. You put your hands on me. I'm not no kid. I already had to light my sister up for putting her hands on me when she was when I turned 18, finally, and went to jail for it. But anyways, um, so 
for her to ignore her daughter and for this Tiara Monique, anytime I called, you would answer. And if you didn't answer, you would send a text. Why didn't she have the same sentiment for her daughter? Because it's about a public reputation. Are you guys following me? Let me know, my crazy. Put some stars in the chat if you guys are following me. Put some stars in the chat if you guys are following me. It gets juicier. <laughs> I told you, go get your bi- child. Let me get my blunt wrap out. Go get your goddamn bill. Go get your uh, BC Goody pack and go get your blunt. Did not. This is crazy. My mother would have never ignored my calls. None of her grown kids, nor when we were younger. <laughs> Do you really think Gail had anything to do with this? If she didn't, she 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 to blame. She she need to pray to God and ask God for forgiveness for neglecting her daughter all her life, all her motherfucking life. She didn't care about what her daughter wanted. Let me see. Hold on. Give me one second. She didn't care about what her daughter wanted. That's why she never called the police. Mm, 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 mm. I don't think it's about knowing about it. It's more about what brought mahogany to what happened and finding a way to prevent it. Right. That's the ultimate thing. Indiana, respectfully, this is the part where black people know I'm talking to us. No, no shade to you because I love you and I appreciate you being here. They know what I'm talking about. This is what our parents and our grandparents teach us not to say publicly. All it is black on black crime. We can talk about that. But what leads to that and what happens behind closed doors and these generation of curses is what we've been protecting. our pa- we, We're protecting our parents by not talking about it. And I'm not protecting them wicked Negroes no more. I'm pointing it out. And white folks got their own set of trauma and own set of shit. I'm talking to Dugger. I don't care if white folks just the same. And I, y'all, I don't give a fuck, okay? I'm going to be like the book of Clarence, nigga, pulling light bulbs out the air. I got clarification on what's going on in our community. Let me address the problem head on without padding and making it okay. That way we can unpack this and get to the solution. Please hit the like. Y'all understand me, right? And then even the post she posted that her daughter sent her, her daughter called her, and then, look, her daughter called her, and then when her daughter called her, she ain't answer. Then her daughter sent the long essay to her. <coughs> Mind you, her daughter sent the essay to her on December the 26th, so if your daughter sent the essay to you on December the 26th, I know you didn't read it because she called you on December the 25th and you still didn't answer. Mm-hmm. Did you even get her baby anything for Christmas? Or you just bought her an Easter outfit? Them shirts that y'all made look like Easter outfit shirts. The blue and the pink and the red. Sorry, it looked like Easter outfit when her sister came in there with them leggings and stuff. I thought she was trying to get a new man. No lie to you. God said, come and go as you please. But you're supposed to be respectful, at least at fucking funerals. That was a brand new shirt with mahogany face on it. And she could have bought some brand new pants instead of some tights in there trying to audition for who going to sleep with her next. Um, Look, this baby loved throwing up the deuces. I hope and pray that this baby grow up to be something. I hope and pray that this baby grow up to know that her grandma is a sack of liar, lying piece of ish. And I'm pretty sure that son is going to tell her. The children so messed up, they protecting Gail. Let's not tell that Gail doing welfare fraud and Gail got all the disability checks, the food stamps and everything coming in her name from this child. Why Why? Why would Gail, and I'm going to show you guys. Please hit the like. Let me see how many likes I got. I'm going to get into these receipts with Gail. I'm going to get into them. Thank y'all guys so much for being here. Let me see how many likes I got. All right, let me see. See how many likes I got. Okay, we finna get into it. We're segueing into it. Okay, I got 248 likes. I need 300 likes before I get into the Gale receipt. So with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cover the WAC 100 and Blueface situation. Hopefully I can get 300 likes by the time I cover that. And we can actually get into some things. And like I told you guys... um, I ain't said nothing that was a lie about motherfucking Gail. Appreciate you guys. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. 300 likes. We're going to get into it. Yo, listen. I uh, hate to have to do this, but I keep getting people telling me that the uh, Blueface brother or somebody saying he's been stabbed up and, and uh, what? I don't know what, what's going on, but Blue talked to me, Baby Bodine. His big homie, he talks to his baby mama, Jaden, and he talks to Rock. That's it. 
Like, he ain't talked to his brother in months and months and months prior to him even having to go to jail. I called his mother maybe a week or two ago and let him know, look, he had a little fight, that's it. Just to let her know she flipped out, started hollering and screaming. Maybe that's some mama shit, I don't know. Maybe he was there when she started hollering and screaming, but all I told her is he had a little fight, a little scuffle, that's it. We all know Blueface know how to fight, right? Just fucking fight. County jail, it happens, right? Um, other than that, just letting the fans know Blue all right. I'm hearing from the mother that Dre allegedly is having a nervous breakdown. She's sending me text messages between her and Dre's wife saying they talking to counselors to get him committed and shit like this. And I guess he's saying things I don't know. That's for them to deal with. But I'm letting y'all know the fans know Blueface all right. All right? Well, uh, spread the word. Blue's right. He ain't been stabbed up. He ain't been none of this shit I'm hearing. He's saying people making attempts on his life and all kind of shit. Blue is in high power. Where the celebrities go? A LA County Jail. All right? I got eyes on him. Shout out to my homeboy, Mont Deuce from Devil Lanes. You know, the Damu card. Got eyes on him through my politics. And, you know, the other side is fucking with him through, through both in and them politics. So, we good. All right? Y'all have a good weekend. So, there you have it. <clears throat> Blueface is in LA County Jail right now. Wack 100 says that Blueface got into a scuffle and it's all through his politics. Wack 100, he gonna find himself in a Rico case just by talking. We got eyes and ears on him. And this and this through my politics. And yada, yada, yada. Blueface, everybody was like, oh, Blueface can fight. We think that because we seen him get into a fight and bust open Christian Rock's alleged father mouth. First of all, that dude is too dark to be Christian Rock's father. Christian Rock... Father is the milkman, the white people that raised her. Let's be clear about that. Uh, but, you know, even the camera kind of like hopped around to show that. And I was like, oh, damn, he hit him one time and he laid him out like that, you know. And then Blueface also went across sees, uh It was the first and second episode of Crazy in Love season two. We see him boxing this 5'9 white boy that he looked like he wanted to kiss. The 5'9 white boy had a 6'3 blue face tired and saying that he didn't want to box anymore. So uh, this whole notion that blue face know how to fight, he barely beat up the white boy. So I don't know about all of that. A blue face is getting caught in gang culture in the L.A. County Jail. Big U and WAC 100 run two different sectors of uh, gangs that are in and out of L.A. County drug Jail. And they whooped up Blueface because uh, I don't know if Blueface really know how to fight. I'm not saying he don't know how to fight. I'm not saying I want to fight him, but um, that wasn't enough substance um, to say that Blueface know how to fight. Him busting that old black man in the mouth, that crackhead that Chris Sean and them found off the streets to say that that was her daddy because the white man is her daddy. Um, that didn't count. It didn't count. You can't be busting up no crackhead. You telling Soldier Boy to meet him in a back alley and he wants to fight and get mad while you fight and, and you get horny. That was a bird call for some Duke. So that don't count. Soldier Boy decided not to show up because he knew Wack 100 and everybody else was going to grab him and put him back there on his hands and on your knees. Hands on your knees. Uh, let that coochie breathe. Um... But yeah, Blueface, he asked for that. He asked for the lifestyle. He asked to be wearing blue. He asked uh, for everybody to call him Blueface. He asked to be indoctrinated in the gang culture. And a lot of these rappers are down low, sleeping around. I'm not saying that about Blueface, so to speak. But for your brother, Dre, who grew up in out of the same bowl, but you so pussy to the point where when somebody touch your little pretty red skin, Blueface, he hyperventilated. And now he need to go to the hospital because he going crazy what happened to his brother. It's starting to... I'm, I get it. I get it because I, I, at one point in time, I was crazy like that for my younger brother too. But dang, the fact that he need therapy and all, it's giving clout chasing. Um, the same way Tokyo Tony came online crying, saying she need two pit bulls and a pistol if Black China ever come around her. And now she, she dream of smelling her bath water. The same way Christian's sister came online with her bottom gap saying in Docs and PD that he had a DV charge. You know, a lot of these people in the family, uh, Carlissa coming, Docs and playing with her grandbaby. You know that's her grandbaby with ASL, Down syndrome, alcohol, fetus syndrome, and bow leggings. You know that's your goddamn grandbaby. You keep using the baby for clout. So Dre ain't doing nothing but using Blueface for clout, okay? Um, if anything, Dre is mad trying to figure out if they done busted Blueface whole wide open or not. 
up there in the LA County jail and <laughs> I'm gagging. Dre, you want to go to jail? You want to hyperventilate? Then why did you try to fight your brother on camera and do all of that stuff publicly? For clout. Why didn't you defend your brother when you necessarily needed to defend him without the cameras rolling and without going on social media crying? For clout. If you really got a problem, won't you get out there in the streets and box some of the niggas that wear red instead of blue? You're not going to do that because you're on the internet looking for clout. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Okay, let me see how many likes we got. Uh, how are you uplifting mahogany by spending hours criticizing, speaking negative about people? Why do you care about them? Um, that's a good question. Well, uh, I'm a content creator. It just so happens what happened with mahogany, I take deep and personal, and I want to enlighten people on that. That's not going to stop me from roasting and gagging Beyonce, Jay-Z, Blueface, no matter what I say to these people or about these people, I'm not Tasha K saying they got viruses. I'm an entertainer first and foremost. I just want you to know that. If you want somebody to sit there and have a third, fourth, fifth, tenth funeral for Mahogany online, we've already done that over here. So clearly you're just coming into my environment. You need to go back and watch my previous content. I'm not going to repeat myself for you. I probably will do it if it's a content creator trying to grift on her. But right now, I'm not going to stop having fun because this is a touching situation to the community. And for me to even act like that's where I'm at mentally and emotionally, like the rest of them are doing, that's how you spot a grifter. I'm not going to stop talking about my content, doing my own docking and my scheduling, recording this in real time, chopping it up and making premiere videos about other things just because we're talking about mahogany. So I greatly appreciate you for being here, but we're all stars and we're going to continue to shine and we're going to uplift other stars. So uh, with that further said, if you come in my chat one more time with anything that my moderators don't agree with you to distract me because I really don't even be looking at the chat like that. We're going to time you out for 86,000 seconds. Thank you. Um, but without further ado, please hit the like. Let me see how many likes I got. Um, before I get into these receipts. And then I also probably end up opening up the phone line. Let me see. Ooh, time is ticking. Uh, I'm supposed to go to the gym. Uh, did Mahogany Jackson abandon her? So with this survey, 74% uh, says yes, she feels guilty. No, Mahogany was grown. So I'm going to end that. I'm going to end that. Uh, and I'm also going to cast my vote. I'm going to say, yes, she feels guilty. But a feeling of guilt does not mean that you take accountability. I've seen criminals unalive people. And, and like, look what happened to the guy who unalive cupcake. He's trying to plead mental insanity, doing all of these legal jargons and movements in the court to not, you know, to avoid the inevitable of him having to face accountability. That is by uh, getting found guilty and then having the option of issuing an apology or not and then getting sentenced, right? So even though she feel guilty does not mean that we don't need to look at this situation for what it is and see this situation within all of us and how we can do better. So please hit the like, please hit the like. Oh, oh my gosh. Can I get four more likes? And then we're going to get into these receipts. Um, well, five more. Somebody unliked it. <laughs> uh, can I get five more likes and we're going to get into the receipts? Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank y'all so much for being here. Please hit the like. Please, please, please. Hit the like and subscribe to the channel, okay? Let me see what time is it. Oh, all right. Let me see. <laughs> let me see something really quickly. I'd be very interested to find that out. Very interested to find this out. One second. We're gonna get into the receipts, okay? The receipts of Mahogany's mom, okay? Perfect. <laughs> yeah that's perfect all right cool so as you guys know i've been following mahogany's case mahogany uh her neighbor jessica her neighbor in jasper alabama came up to my platform and gave me an exclusive not only did she give me an exclusive she also sent me text messages that at the time, I really didn't fully comprehend the substance of them and how they would be of a benefit to actually getting the truth out about mahogany and the truth about what we do to each other as black people. I've stood 10 toes down 
that Mahogany's mother uh, has a lack of accountability. Do she feel bad? If she should feel bad. Mahogany was her last child. She did certain things to all of her kids that she perpetuated onto Mahogany. Does she feel bad about that? No, because if she did, she would then have to apologize to all of the other kids. Mahogany is not here. So there's layers to Gail. Gail has what I call the honorary black woman syndrome. Or in the words of my boy, the uh, baby mama terrorist syndrome, where she do things to separate the men from her, her kids or other kids' life so she can take full control over them and be the sole influence for whatever reason she has with the men or whatever. So my boy called her a baby mama terrorist. So, you know, I started researching the receipts about what Mah Mahogany said, and I reached out to the mother. And it took a couple of days to get responses from her in writing and also to have a phone conversation with her. And so I want to introduce you guys to the text messages or the Facebook messages that I had with Mahogany's mom. And at the time, unfortunate for her, she didn't know what type of receipts I had or what type of information I had or particularly my stance for Mahogany. And if she did, she didn't care. She just was solely invested in getting me to flip so that she could control the narrative, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the first receipt, all right? So here's the first receipt, um, just so we can prove it. This is me talking to Gail Maddox, okay? I was polite. I introduced myself. You know, everybody know this is her. On the 9th, I said, hello, I have been following Mahogany Jackson's case on my YouTube. I'm not a grifter, but here to deliver the bigger messages to black America. As someone who escaped the hood culture, please check out my platform and content. Send to the link. And this is the 9th, right? And for the past week, I have not been pandering to the mother or saying anything to trigger her to click my link from the audience. As a matter of fact, if the mother, anybody in the family decides to come in my chat, I don't have a link for you. I might open up a phone line after I show these receipts, but I don't have a link for you. You know, it's 2024. I'm not on StreamYard. So send to that just so she can listen because I'm like, you know, take accountability. And so, you know, Sunday I wrote her again to hello. So there you guys know there was an initial communication being met by me. Here's the second message. Follow me. So in this second message, I told her, you know, I was looking at other people shaping. I was like, you know what? Maybe they're right about the mother. Or maybe I'm right. Actually, it was me. I'm not going to cap. I said, I see a lot of negative content about you i like to speak with you on my platform. She said, I don't mean any type of harm when I say this if it's negative. I want no part. Those that truly know me in my relationship with my daughter know it's not true, but thank you. I was like, okay. All right, well, you know, you on, you, she going to be on Gail King next week. That's what I found out in the phone call. She She's on Gail King and everybody, so... What's to her to even, you know, try to get her to click your link on YouTube when she got bigger and better interviews to ask and certain to answer certain questions and to control the narrative, right? Just follow me. So, oh, is this a message? So I was basically telling her that I grew up in a sheltered household with a traditional black family, and I basically escaped from it by moving away to Hollywood. And I said, I wish you, I wish your daughter would have had a friend like me. You know, your daughter is special to our culture. So she wasn't responding until I said this message, right? And not that I want to be friends with a 20-year-old. I said a friend like me, no matter what age. Jessica, 37, older than me, and she was a friend of Mahogany. So I do believe in people that are older being able to influence and inspire younger people. I believe in that. So I told her, I said, I wish she... I wish your daughter would have had a friend like me. You know, your daughter is special to our coach. She loved that. And this is a double sentence. I said, I wish your daughter would have had a friend like me. You know, your daughter is special to our coach. 
So because she ignored me and because I've been saying what I've been saying about her, I know she, I feel like she only hoarded this message for the second sentence. You know your daughter is special to our culture because it gives her an opportunity to get attention off of her daughter that she would have never gotten in her life but for the tragedy that happened to her daughter. I said, 20-year-old make mistakes. If she was stable, she would not have went back backwards to those demons. And then she became responsive. She said, I wish she did too, but we as parents can talk to them, preach to them, even show them the way. To uh, But ultimately, it is up to them to make the decision to choose better friends. I gave her everything that she needed to be all that she wanted, but it's a choice. And she was trying to make it right, but didn't get the opportunity. She was full. Of, she was really full of love for everyone. She deemed a friend or family. Okay. And this is where I was like, okay, all right. I got your attention. Yeah. But she was begging Jessica for food and basic products. She went to jail for arguing with you about spending her food stamps. Then got evicted though. Follow me, okay? So you responded. Now it's time. Like, I already see you on Gail King and all you doing these interviews. You posting it up. You you think you're a star. You getting attention off of your dead daughter. So who am I on YouTube? The question you were asking for an interview. So I was like, since now that I have your attention, let's get to it. Gail told me when I said about her daughter begging Jessica for food, and spending her food stamps. She said, all of that is false. You have to get your facts straight. Did you know she lived in an apartment in my name that I paid for and didn't even live there? I paid all bills and the house was full. And the house was full of that. I purchased not her or anyone else. Never had to beg for anything. Did you know I just moved the furniture out of the apartment last week? You didn't move the furniture out of the apartment at the time in which I was communicating with Jessica. Let's be clear. And also, since you said that that was a lie about you having food in the house and your daughter didn't need, well, let me let your daughter tell us about the food in the house, okay? Uh, December 1st, December, okay. Was it December 1st message? Let me see. Okay, so yo, if you had food in the house and everything was full, you took your daughter car in November, according to Jessica, according to what I believe. Why is your daughter asking for baking soda? Basic households, you know what I mean? Sometimes you can give it the benefit of the doubt, true enough. And, you know, she said that I was lying. Let me show you this again. She, she said that Basically, get your facts straight. She lived in an apartment, never had to beg for anything. Well, she's begging for bacon soda. I got other messages where she's begging for Jolly Ranchers, begging for ramen noodles and everything in November, towards the end of November, because stamps don't fall into December 3rd. Did you know I just moved the furniture out of the apartment last week? So, but you got your daughter evicted. And so let's continue. Then why did, then why did you get her thrown out? She even asked Jessica to check on her daughter while you was at the apartment, if that girl was still in Jasper, she wouldn't have had been in the situation. She was homeless. Again, not true. Get your facts straight because you have them wrong. Would you like for me to send you the last message received from Jessica? I said, yeah, of course. Of course. And I said, can I call you? But hold on. Let's hold on that. She said, then I said, then why did you get her thrown out? She even asked Jessica. To check on her daughter. Again, not true. Get your facts straight because you have it wrong. I have it wrong. So, I have it wrong. And are you going to lie on your dead daughter? Because what you didn't know at this time was <laughs> that I got all the tea in the messages involving your deceased daughter. What was this one on December? What was this one on? Oh, okay, that, that's another one, her begging for vinegar. You know, since the house was full of food and products, begging for vinegar, a cup of vinegar. Mm, don't sound full to me. But let's get to the point. But you said that I was lying and I don't know any facts that your daughter wasn't, that you didn't get her arrested begging for stamps and stuff like that, right? 
And these receipts were already shown when it comes to mahogany on my platform before, right? This is the first one where mahogany is telling Jessica to go check on, do me a favor and check on my baby. Me and my mom's not speaking. I just had another bad dream. So please check on my baby for me. So uh, if she trusted you and you was his mother, why would she need anybody to check on her baby? Okay. And let's get back to the food stamps part where, you know, mahogany, she had mahogany arrested. After mahogany was like, girl, you fit, you spending my food stamps. What are you doing? Uh, let's go to this one. Okay. Just got out for work, girl. My mom, your mom didn't call me. I would have bailed you out. My mom called the police on me for what? Right here at the bottom said, because I told her. And behind my picture said to stop selling our food stamps. I know y'all can say do not. You're reaching. See how they say stop selling our food stamps? My mama called the police on me. For what? Because I told her to stop selling our food stamps. Okay? Let's go back. Let's, let's bring up the other one. Since y'all said that I'm lying and that that didn't say food stamps towards the bottom. So, because I told her to stop selling my food stamps. Right? Go right here to the top. Oh, where is it? No, no, no. That's not what I want. Ugh. Don't tell me I mixed that up. Selling all food stamps. All right. Hide that one. Hide that one. One second. Since your daughter, since you didn't get your daughter evicted and it caused a problem for her because you sold her food stamps, you didn't know your daughter had already put all of this in writing. No, she's not, and they charged me with failure to obey. Oh, my gosh, did your mom want you to go to jail? I'm sorry that happened. Yes, she did, and it's okay. Life will get better. Yeah, y'all will work it out. Everyone struggle right now. She'll work it out as of right now. I don't have a mom, yada, yada, yada. And she wanted everybody to believe she was the mother of the year, but you're selling your daughter food stamps in an apartment. It's still, it's still disputable. As to whether or not that apartment in Jasper was in Mahogany's name or not. It's still very disputable. Because Mahogany stayed there. And if you, Gail, you work for a real estate company, you have a tax company, why would you even qualify with your name on a subsidized apartment? Why? You might have co-signed for it to establish residency since you already... Sign her daughter birth certificate to permanently establish <laughs> that you're going to be a headache for the, at least 18 more years in this child's life. Um, let me see. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here's a message right here. So like I said, look at this message right here. No, that's not it. See how it says it right here at the bottom? Because I told her to stop selling on food stamps. Right there at the bottom next to my beautiful face. Look at that. Now, look at the top of this. What that say is cut off. It says selling our food stamps and yeah. So when I asked Mahogany's mother, when I said this to Mahogany's mother, then why did she get then why did you get her thrown out? She even asked Jessica to check on her daughter while you was there at the apartment. If that girl was still in Jasper, she wouldn't be there. She wouldn't be homeless. Again, not true. Get your facts straight because you have you have it wrong. Would you like for me to send you the next message with Jessica? And I said, yeah, and I got that message. But right there, you just lied and said you didn't call. You called the police on your daughter and it caused a disturbance and got her evicted. You lied and said you kept food in the house and that she didn't get no food stamps. Let me see. Let me bring up the next one. Um, um, four. So I'm catching you in these lies. And you're lying to protect whatever reputation that you have, which is why your mainstream media and news getting and grifting attention off of your daughter. It almost feels like a sacrifice for you to live a better life. One, two, three. That's what I'm getting for. Let me see. She said. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what it is. That's not the one I want. Bear with me, because what I'm basically doing is cross-referencing receipts from the mother with her daughter. 
Her daughter said that she, her mother put, got her kicked out because she called the police and she went to jail and argued with her for, for, for stealing her food stamps. And the mama saying it's not true. So is she going to come to the internet or address this and say, uh, my daughter was a habitual liar and never to believe her? The same way in the black household, we say don't believe the girls who complain about being S8. And now she's sending me this message from Jessica, right? This message said, after she then texts Jessica and built a pretense to Jessica, a white girl, a white lady, right? Mind you, I've already showed you how she posted on her community wall on Facebook that some stranger or some quote-unquote goddaughter said that she was always there for her anytime she needed her. But at the same time, Gail posted a screenshot of her daughter endlessly calling her Wanting her to pick up a phone Friday, Saturday, then Sunday, she texts you at 7.46 a.m. that she's being held hostage. You read it at 7.56 a.m., take a screenshot of it, and then post it the next day at 7.01 a.m., 24 hours later. And now you mean to tell me that I'm supposed to be so dumb and not believe that you've manipulated Jessica into falling for your BS and getting Jessica to say this to you in a text message. I'm sorry. She's lucky to have you. She's got to work on her temper. She snapped on me the other night big time because she wanted me to run her somewhere. Yet again, her car been gone since November. Gail took the car from her since November. So, But Mahogany told Jessica that she gave up the car so she wouldn't be ripping and running. But now she begging and mad because she can't even go to the store. Make it make sense. Anyways. I'd always taken her to the store. She was mad, but I told her I have kids. I work seven days a week. Can't jump when you tell me to jump. You should appreciate the fact that I take you anywhere. She apologized to me the next morning, but it gave me kind of a feeling to a feel of her temperament. So all of this happened in December. The mother. So all of a sudden, Mahogany been living in Jasper for this whole time. And then when her mama coming in the picture, all of a sudden, the neighbor finally see her temper. That tell you that the mama was the problem. Anyways, this message goes on to say she apologized to me the next morning, but it gave me kind of a feel for her temper. I just won't, don't want to, her to get herself hurt one day. By the way that she talks to these men when she get mad, yada, yada, yada. I said, I already seen that. That's typical te teenage behavior. And Gail said, but you said I put her out. Clearly, I didn't. This message has nothing to do with her being put out. Even if I take for fact everything Jessica said, if she has a bad temperature, that means what I said and what she said on December the 4th, she went arguing with you with her bad temperature, uh, temper about you spending her food stamps. And that's why she showed out in front of the cops and the cop arrested her. But you, you called the police on her. You raised her. Why would you call the police on her knowing, given the fact that you came from something and now you want to sell these bad ass leaky roof properties over in Birmingham? The white folks only buying them from you because they feel bad for you. And I'm here to expose you. You're not going to grift off of your daughter when you didn't like your daughter, when you didn't respect your daughter at all. It's not going to happen on my watch. You can go and live your mediocre lifestyle. I hope they investigate you for welfare birth certificate fraud because I think you signed her daughter birth certificate too. I said, I got a niece that looks just like your daughter. Whenever she see me, she cry like a baby and tell me all her problems. I pour into her and give her life instead of taking away from her. I said, December the 4th, about them food stamps that usurped her uh, uh, stability. Them people knew she was desperate and in need. She said, Mahogany never had food stamps. Did you know that? She said, Mahogany never had food stamps. So who's lying? Her and Mahogany. Who's lying? Who's lying? Who are we going to believe? Oh, we're going to believe the parent because that's the parent and you're supposed to respect it under your mother. Uh-huh. Right there. Look at the top of this message right here. Look at this shit right here. The top of this goddamn message. One second. Let me make it bigger for y'all so y'all can see. What does the top of that message say? What does the top of this message say? selling our food stamps. And yeah, so Gail, you just told me in a message that, y that Mahogany didn't even have food stamps. You could have been telling a lie and the truth at the same time. 
Because if you was telling the truth, you was getting food stamps for her daughter who you signed a birth certificate of. Or you too high and mighty and prestigious and make too much money to get food stamps. But you were selling our food stamps. And yeah. And this is how she got evicted. That's to the baby Yoda mouth ass dude over there that's trying to get Gail to interview with y'all. And I'm going to roast and pack up both of y'all for months if that happens. So ain't no need for you to testify or justify none of these receipts and this good ass tea that you gave me, Gail. Jessica told her after she said that she got arrested and caused a disturbance for yelling at her mama for selling the food stamps, right? That put a one, put put a one in the chat. Put a, put a one in the chat if that clearly says selling our food stamps. Now let me go back to let me see. Let me go back to this message. Look at this message. Let me blow this one up. Let me blow this one up. The month, you tell one lie, you're gonna tell many lies. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all here. The mama said they never got food stamps. The mama to put in jail. Did your mama want you to go to jail? I'm sorry that happened. Yes, yeah, she did, and it's okay. It's life. It'll get better. Yeah, it'll work itself out. But like I said, why was it so important? And it doesn't matter if she was over here and yada, yada, yada when, when that happened. It doesn't matter that she went to jail on the fourth. It doesn't matter that she wasn't living in Jasper. Jessica told her she was going to be evicted right here. Like, you know, I'm sorry if y'all can't think and comprehend. She said she got in an argument with her mama, as you see, for selling our food stamps. And yeah. Jasper said, damn, is she there now? You know, sometimes when you get arrested down there, they will ban you from the house and from the apartment. So when you called your, the police on your daughter for arguing with you about selling food stamps, they banned her from the house and the apartment. I mean, she's on the lease and she can be there. They got to go through the court in order to really get her out. So December the 4th, say the 5th, 6th, 9th, when she was in Birmingham, got served a three-day, a uh, 30-day notice. That's say January. You now you got to be out by January, mid-January, or we gonna file an eviction action. You file an eviction action, it take about thirty days. Now you got to be out by mid-February, or towards the end of the February. Are you gonna be evicted? What's what's good? What's good? Okay, Gail. Since that apartment was in your name, I think it's time for me to do a background check on you. Um, to see if that apartment was in your name. You need to come with the receipts. This is the true crime sector, sweetheart. You you caused a disturbance in your daughter's apartment, and you well versed enough to know that by doing that, that your daughter was gonna get evicted from them apartments and necessarily be needy upon and dependent upon you. Okay, so there is mahogany talking about the food stamps. Talking about the food stamps. December 4th, about the food stamps that usurped her stability. Them people knew she was desperate to need. Mahogany never need food stamps. Did you know that? Well, she probably never needed them. She got them. How are you going to justify that? Are you going to call your daughter a liar and say, no, we never got it to protect? Oh, I'm so bougie. I don't need food stamps. Oh, my gosh. I work for this real estate company, and I just close houses, even though, your deals was going down and you using your daughter for clout, for national attention, for local attention. Everybody want to buy from you without even checking the products, the good, or even seeing who the fuck you really is because they feel bad for you because your daughter's not here. You are a narcissist, Gail. Got some more receipts. Got some more receipts. Whew. And it, no, I don't like her. For the people that keep guessing, one, two, three, four, five. Is this the next one? Okay, now that's the receipt with Jessica. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is this one it? Oh, no. Shit, I got receipts and voice recorded. Like, what you talking about? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is this it? Okay, let's see this receipt. She said, Mahogany never got food stamps. Did you know that? <laughs> Mom, don't lie on your dead daughter. Lying on your dead daughter. She said, Mahogany never got food stamps. Mahogany said that she was arrested for arguing with her bubble for selling our food stamps. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, but you want to sit there and tell me that mahogany never got food stamps. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to put another survey up. Y'all, please click the like. Oh, my goodness. It looked like I got another me member. Thank you, Jazzy Red. Welcome to the All-Stars. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you for the All Stars. Thank you for the Super Channel. Y'all making me feel so special. And thank y'all so much. If I missed y'all cash out Super Chats and Super Stickers, I would do my best to go back over it once I open the phone line. i just really be excited about giving y'all this content. Right? Um, um, Ratchet Hood Talk said... You know, I appreciate the financial support. You know, they said I only made $200 so far, but this is actually an exclusive. And wonder how many people are going to take this and copy it. I actually want you to because the thing is the people that are watching this know exactly where it's coming from. And now you got a clear indicator of who you're copying this from. So you can silence it and put it up there and chop it up or whatever. People know who actually worked hard to get this material. But again, this is involving a public case. So... If I plastered my logo on this shit so nobody could copy it, I would be wrong. Or I would be a cloud chaser, right? This is public information. This woman's trying to grift off of her daughter. Just make sure you get proper credit and due diligence when you reference where you got this material from. Mahogany never got food stamps. Did you know that? Never even had to buy food. Enough said. But she was begging Jessica for salt, vinegar, potato chips, bars of soap, female tampons, all of this stuff, vinegar to wash her hair, all of this. Talking about enough said, you are a narcissist, girl. Girl, you didn't know you was giving me all the tea to prove that I've been right about you since day one. You, you may be looking for ratings, but this is my daughter's life. You're speaking on, please get your facts straight. We got the facts straight. The fact is you lied on your dead daughter. Lied on your dead daughter. Lie, 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 lie on your dead daughter. Your daughter said that she went to jail because she told you to stop spending her food stamps, girl. You don't want no white people to know that you get food stamps because they're going to start investigating you for them government crimes you be committing. Talking about I'm looking for ratings. I'm not looking for no rating. Ratchet TV already told you I ain't make number $200. It's, I, I didn't had at least motherfucking uh, 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 300,000 clicks and views with $200. So who really about the passion and who really about the investigative journalist? Me. I'm speaking from her messages, dear. This is when I told her, bitch. Uh, I'm, okay. You have to get your facts straight. Did you know the only time Mahogany has been locked up in Jasper was for a failure to appear, never because of me. Please get your facts straight. Well, I checked the Jasper court system. That's not even indexed, let alone what happened on December 4th. It's not even indexed. And there's a call. And <laughs> there was another call. And you bet your ass I had a conversation with her. And you bet your sweet ass I'm holding on to that conversation. For now, okay? But I just need y'all to see. If Gail click anybody link, she gonna get packed up like a fruit roll up. I'm telling you. Um, so, I'm gonna show you guys one more. Should I? Yeah, one more and that'll be enough, Okay. And I told her, I said, and your daughter didn't write that long message. I have everything I'm saying and writing from your daughter. What long message are you speaking of? The message that fake Bishop read, you forgot to edit out the scene. Now I know his is bogus. Now I know this is bogus. You are looking for a come up. I said, I have many messages with your daughter, grandma, and etc. But not on my watch. No, I'm trying to break generational curses. She says, you are the problem, not the solution. So Gail said, I'm the problem and not the solution. Even though she done lied to me in writing on her dead daughter and didn't know that her dead daughter already put in writing that you had her thrown out and ev evicted from her place because she got into an argument with you over food stamps. If you lied about not your daughter not receiving food stamps and lied about your daughter not getting in you for spending her food stamps, what else did you lie about? And I told you, girl, Gail, I ain't stunned you. I'm not worried about you. Like I told you, this right here is the nigga that want to interview you. This is the nigga that want to interview you. He got mama issues, and he can't even stand the fact that his mama was on crack and had to sell him to two white men on um, that stick baseball bats up in there in that goddamn dungeon. And he go in his little corner with that little plywood wall with all the termites eating at that shit with that glow-in-the-dark light. This is who want to interview you. 
I'm going to check you because you need to be checked, Gail. And it's going to be a slow burn. Mm-hmm. Thank y'all so much for being here. Should I open up the phone line for you guys to have any comments? Because um, I, I want to know. Do you guys have any comments or concerns? Am I tripping? Am I gaslighting? Yeah, Gail is busted and disgusted. Why is she even engaging? <laughs> She's engaging because she wants to be a star, okay? So uh, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the phone line. When I open up the phone line, you guys got to call me and call in to leave me your thoughts and perceptions within a matter of a few minutes or I'm going to get up out of here. But, you know, when you hear them talking about her mom and start direct, even, even the dude over there that, Listen to what I'm saying and repeat all of my major talking points. Act like he's intellectual. Yeah, that's the game they like to play. Uh, so, yeah. Call-in number is right there on the screen. Moderators put 310-893-6961 in the chat. I'm going to open up the phone lines right now. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Also, um, also do me a favor, everybody. Please go ahead and join the Mahogany Jackson uh, Facebook group that we got going on. Um, Nightbot has been put it in the chat. Just search Mahogany Jackson case discussion. And there's a private Facebook group that we are a part of um, right now. There's nearly 800 people a part of it. And it's growing tremendously due to my efforts and wanting to know the truth. Any update, any material you guys drop in that. I'm not finna indict people. I'm not finna sit up here and practice law so that Giovanni Clapp knows how to get out of the situation she's in. Keep in mind, we've had video for Shanquilla Robinson and Cabo 6 is still free. So just because there's video going on, some of the people are looking for an alibi. Anybody that's talking about trashy mahogany, you're going to get all of the smoke from me. Anybody that's talking about bailing out one of the suspects, you're going to get all the smoke from me. Anybody give the mother a platform for a click and a view so she can sit up there and lie and not address what we just see, you're going to get smoke from me. I promise you. I'm passionate about this. So y'all done sat up there and let Ratchet TV talk about me and brag, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. You, you're not going to use nothing, no shame me. Anything that you can use to shame against me, I'm going to use it for my own motherfucking benefit right now. Yes, it's true. I ain't made number $200, even though I had over 200,000 clicks and views talking about Mahogany Jackson. The typical content creator would have moved on to the next subject. Not me. I'm passionate about it. Okay, I don't give a fuck about Blue and all these toxic roaches that's trying to grift off of this unalive girl. I'm here for justice for her on a substantial, deep, deep, deep level. Deeper than they can imagine. And like I said, bitch, anybody you go to, especially if it's a motherfucker who got uh, braces in their mouth at the age of 40, they mama neglected them. I don't fuck with niggas like that. Y'all niggas is stuck. And y'all niggas just like Mahogany Jackson friends. Uh, so talking about he have 115K subscribers. I only I made $200. You made $15,000. But guess what? My energy ain't going to change. I guarantee you, if you didn't make that money, your energy won't be the same. My energy going to be the same. And your energy won't even be the same if them people decide to support me because you played with me. I have a passion for this. The rest of them are grifters. I'm letting you know that right now. Get your tea. Do whatever. But y'all, oh, he got a bigger platform. He's been on YouTube longer. I'm the one doing the work. I'm the one who's doing the internal work, the historic work. Again, I didn't expect to come up on this to feel this way about the situation. And I do. I feel like it's important for all of us. Okay, please hit the like. Please hit the like. I greatly appreciate you guys. I'm going to open up the phone line. Uh, let me make sure this shit is connected. Host the show. Start show. Oh my gosh. I don't know why this Bluetooth, I got to unconnect and reconnect. Just bear with me, you guys. Let me know if you guys have any comments or concerns in the chat below. I'm going to try to get to that as well. While I figure this out. Oh, my gosh. If it's not one thing, it's another one when it comes to this. Um, if, you may, uh, if you may be right about one thing, then you're giving up the criminal, criminals. Ahead. That's what I'm saying. 
not to mention putting bounties on people's head and giving voices to criminals. Okay, so sick. They interview the ninth suspect over there on um that dude that with that Burger King crown. By the way, if you guys like my hat, it is the Denot Show hat. It is comfortable. I'm gonna go out partying in this. They're gonna be looking at me like I got my own Hollywood show. It is gonna be all about the Denot Show. So got my thank you cap on. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for calling Colin Studios host and call screener line. Please enter your show or meeting number and press pound. Oh, I got one call already waiting. Enter your six digit pin number. Welcome host. You are now in the host room and can manage your callers from the call in studio web interface. Hey, welcome. Caller 347, how are you doing? Thanks for calling in. Hello? No, 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 no. Hello? 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 Uh, can you hear me? Oh, let me call this a man. <sighs> mm. Okay, all right. Hello? Hello? Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can, I, I can hear you. Uh, do you have me playing in the background or on another device? No. Okay, how are you doing? What's your name, sweetheart? Lisa. You say Lisa? Yeah. How's it going? What's your thoughts about the Mahogany uh, Jackson case? Yeah, I just want to ask you. Um, you can't hear me? It's kind of hard to understand you. I'm so sorry. Okay, well, that caller hung up. So call the line, call the line if you have any questions or concerns. You know they're going to open up these party lines and chat and gossip and remix what I said and take it and run with it and do whatever. Um, but if you guys don't call in, I got to go to the gym. Yeah, I got to go to... Uh... Okay. Oh, never mind. Not today. All right, let me drop the link to the Facebook group as well and get to any thoughts or opinions. Yes, put some stars in the chat if you support the boy. And let me know what you guys think. Right now is a great time to support the channel in the best way you know how. If you're at work and you forgot to like this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Support the channel by hitting the thumbs up, subscribing, obviously, and become an all-star. Greatly appreciate each and every one of you for being here, okay? Uh... Let me get to the chat. All right. You guys got about a couple of more minutes to call in the line. Let me make sure. Or else we're going to get up out of here. People be scared to talk to me because I'm going to hold you account. <sighs> Especially when the investigation is still going on. It's not just, it's about money. It's about justice, not money. You're absolutely right. Hit the subscribe button. This is the thing. If she's not working, how can she survive? She was on food stamps. If she's not working, how can she survive? She's on food stamps. That's a, that's a question and issue with the mother. If she's on food stamps, she was getting government assistance and subsidized housing, which indicates that she was receiving some type of government stipulation in order for that apartment complex to... Um, sign off on her moving there. So for Gail to get that subsidized apartment, go back to the interview I did with... J Matter of fact, let me pull that up. I'm going to pull that up because, like, <laughs> if I'm over here working all day and I say something, it is facts, even with the mother. The mother lied to me to my motherfucking face. She lied in my goddamn face. But, you know, let me go back to what Jessica said and we're going to dissect it. And another thing um, that I caught in real time... When Jessica was on my platform speaking, 
What I caught in real time was that Jessica had an interest in protecting the mother and protecting her name, her reputation, and everything else, which is exactly why she told me in the email that I showed you guys earlier that she don't want no problem. She got kids, and she got to live there, meaning that maybe Gail when might use some type of coercive mannerism or some type of psychological manipulation to make her feel bad about speaking on behalf of Mahogany. So let me get to this. <clears throat> please hit the like, please hit the like. Um, okay, I, I got one call coming in. Give me one second. Hello, caller, you're on the line. What's up? Oh, Janai, can you hear me? This is Lonnie. Yes, I can hear you. You say money like money. <laughs> No, Lonnie, like L-O-N-N-I-E. Lonnie, what's up, Lonnie? How are you doing? Good. I'm calling out of Sacramento. Um, I've been listening in for a couple of days, and I really appreciate content. I'm very interested in where you go with, um, you know, generational trauma. Um, so I can't wait, you know, for, you know, for you to just start discussing more of how you overcome, because I, too, you know, go through things with my mom. So I just want to say, keep up the good work and I'm looking forward to more from you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you. And that's what I'm here for. And given the fact that I guess with this particular case, oh, sorry, it's kind of windy and noisy. With this particular situation, I feel like the generational curse angle is the most appropriate direction for me to go as I've been actually trying to explain to multiple people throughout incidents to where people have treated me like mahogany online. People have treated me like I'm an outcast and want to unalive me, get rid of my platform, want to harm me in real life. And I've actually been saying these things for a very long time. So I greatly appreciate you for being here and valuing my voice Definitely. We'll get you a good workout on it, and thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Phone line is open for anybody else that wants to call 310-893-6961. Let's get into Jessica uh, so that we can cross-reference it with uh, the mother and the BS going on with the mother, okay? You put, I had some messages. You have messages was, from Mahogany? She was struggling really around Christmas time is when she got arrested for putting her hands on her. She was struggling in around Christmas time. She got arrested for putting her hands on her mom. Around Christmas time, her mother plastered this message, acting like she's the best message on December the 26th. She was struggling around Christmas time. Mind you, uh, if you go to Gail Maddox's um, Facebook profile, you will see in that screenshot where her daughter allegedly left her this big, long message that I feel like was edited. Um, she called her the day before on Christmas, and Gail did not answer it. Her mom, and that kind of set in motion. My message, I think, was the 23rd. Um, I've, I've got to go back and check, but Mahogany was hurt, you know, that her mom would actually call the police because we live where we live in Jasper. It is kind of the hood of Jasper. Um, and it's government housing. So once her mother called the police, that's an automatic eviction. So it was government housing. And once her mother called the police, that was an automatic eviction. So Gail sent me a message saying, um, Gail sent me a message saying that her Jessica has confirmed that Mahogany was not lying because um, she was locked up. Um, and Gail also said that the apartment was in her name. I'm trying to get to that right here. She said that Mahogany's apartment was in her name. So for Gail to receive government housing in an apartment in her name, what's your income? So I don't believe Gail when she said that Mahogany's apartment was in her name. See right here said, did you know she lived in an apartment in my name that I paid for and didn't even live there? I paid all the bills and the house was full of that I purchased, not her, anyone. So if the apartment was in your name, why do you qualify for government subsidized housing, Gail, if you work with all these white people in flipping houses? That's number one. So you're going to have to show the receipts and that you are literally the sole tenant. Maybe you co-sign for it. Maybe. And you don't want us to know that because you got your daughter put out. 
Um, and also, you're talking about you paid for all the bills. It was government subsidizing. Usually, um, those places come with, uh, you know, cheap rent and water, maybe the lights um, and maybe the gas in Alabama if, they, if it had gas. But, you know, with you paying $20 a month or whatever, however much it costs for subsidizing housing, um, in addition to, you know, whatever else. And if Mahogany qualifies for government subsidized housing, of course, she receives food stamps. So this is another lie Gail told. I don't believe that this apartment was in your name. If it was, then you're lying about your income on housing. So you can get in trouble for that. So uh, you might want to close your mouth moving forward before they start investigating you for birth certificate fraud, for signing your granddaughter birth certificate. Because it's considered domestic violence. So it kind of set everything in motion. After that, she had to go back to Birmingham. She didn't have anywhere to go. So again, to the baby Yoda dude who got mama issues on his own, um, that's dookie way for you to sit there and say, why does it matter that she didn't live in Jasper or not? The neighbor who first came to my platform and I heard her clearly, and that's how you can tell who's actually really here for the content or not, you don't have to tell me nothing about the facts involving Mahogany's case. I can tell you backwards, front, we're doing a front flip in my sleep because I'm that locked in and I'm that passionate about it. So for you to grift and bait Jessica out of your chat to do an interview with her and you not listen to her over there with a gun be hat cut, looking like you a homeless person <laughs> that just got cleaned up and put a piece of pie wall behind you like you're a content creator. You're not listening. So how can you say that because she didn't live in Jasper, that didn't matter? She was homeless. I keep, I've been saying this for days. I don't need to bring this interview back up to say this. I'm bringing it back up because I got to correct y'all fools and y'all fucking idiots that keep lying on this dead girl. Her own mama lying on her, and I'm not going to let you lie on her. She was fucking homeless. Like I said, I'm the one telling the truth. Call the police. Because we live where we live in Jasper, it is kind of the hood of Jasper um, and it's government housing. So once her mother called the police, that's an automatic eviction mm. because it's considered domestic violence. December the 4th, automatic eviction. Well, you got to give a 30 day notice to move. She got the 30 day notice and served it by the time she got out of jail December the 9th. January the 9th, the 30th day. Y'all remember when Blue said she wasn't cool with Mahogany and Mahogany didn't come back around until about January when she knew she was going to be evicted. So she's still buying herself time. You got the 30 day notice. You can't go nowhere. The apartment was just clean. The apartment literally was just clean this past weekend. 30 day notice. Oh, now you don't want to move out? We got to take you to court and evict you. I don't know what's going You can't pull up these documents and stuff like you got to go to these courthouses in Alabama to get it, right? So 30 day notice, now it's an eviction action. What day? I need the paperwork. Somebody in Alabama, I need the paperwork. Jasper County, what day was the eviction signed? What day was the levy of property signed? And what was the move out date? I guarantee you the move out date had to be around February the 20th, the 23rd or whatever, when she went back to Birmingham, called her mama that Friday. Her mama didn't answer. Her mama didn't text her back or nothing because she was homeless. And her mama didn't call her. Her mama didn't text her back because her mama already knew. Her mama knew by putting her in jail and causing that disturbance. She knew right away that she was going to get evicted. Just like the neighbor knew right away. Mahogany, 20 years old. This is her first apartment. She don't know she's about to be evicted. She telling, she telling Jessica, oh, life will get better. Girl, what? You just lost your subsidized government apartment. And you want food stamps and you ain't got no job. And if you got evicted from here for a domestic violence, how long is it going to take you for, for you to get another subsidized apartment when an eviction is on your record from another subsidized apartment? She might never be able to get a subsidized apartment ever. You think her mama didn't know that? as ghetto as they is, that daughter, her sister. I do think her sister, her oldest sister, that's the one, that's the one that really care. I can see it. That older sister, even though she, she she's one of the ones that care, but she don't know how to show it or she can't show it because it was never shown to her. Like even me, I have a profound love for people, 
profile love for people in my family, that type of the type of love I have was never shown to me. And if I'm around all of these vultures, I can't, I gotta blend in. I gotta be silent about certain things. I gotta be silent if if uh the stepdaddy or whoever reached that mahogany and reached that mahogany daughter, I gotta be silent about all of that. So if the mama knew she was gonna be evicted when she called the police, and mahogany specifically wrote that her mother wanted her to go to jail. She wanted her to go to jail. She wanted her to be harder. She wanted her to be evicted because she's a fucking narcissist. She wanted her daughter to beg and plead her the same way she signed her daughter's birth certificate, inherently making her beg and plead for the validation of her own daughter through you because you signed the birth certificate and you ain't put nobody out your puss. You get what I'm saying? Am I far-fetched for saying welfare fraud is a thing in the hood? The way the daughter is too young, the mother signed the birth certificate and get all the benefits and take care of both of them like they children for the rest of their life. Huh? Get out of here. Don't get shy now because white folks in our business. So it kind of set everything in motion. After that, she had to go back to Birmingham. She didn't have anywhere to go. She had to go back to Birmingham. She didn't know where to go. The whole time while I'm sitting here not saying nothing, I'm like, this is an interview, did not. But I know exactly what she's saying. She's basically saying that this girl had no choice but to be in the situation she was in. It was either call her mama that Friday endlessly I'll go back to the streets and be around the people with the streets. That girl was in her fucking pajamas before they came in and attacked her. So I don't want people to affiliate her with gang. Brandon and them is fucking lying. Those are not facts. Y'all reporting what these people are saying as facts out here in the media to defame this girl. I don't give a fuck about none of that in this particular situation. Let's keep a bean a bean. Her mama didn't give a fuck about her. Because if you did, you would answer the phone for your daughter that Friday before she got unalive that Sunday. You posted that on your community wall on Facebook. You can try to delete it. If you do, guess what? I got a screenshot of it, Gail. And if you also delete it, guess what? Your algorithm goes down. Isn't that why you leaving it up there? Your daughter death is the most attention you ever got in your motherfucking life, Gail. And you lying on your dead daughter. Your daughter was homeless. And your neighbor, her neighbor, Jessica, the same one you validated and confirmed in your messages when you was telling me, oh, do you do you want me to send you? Do you want me to send you the message Jessica sent? You confirmed to me that Jessica is a credible source. Way more credible than you, because you lied about your daughter getting food steps and your daughter, and I got the messages saying that your daughter got food steps from her. Thank you for that. So nobody can question anything that Jessica said. And she was there in Birmingham for three days before that. Happened. Oh, welcome, welcome. I got a new member. Welcome, um, Michelle McKenzie. I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Thank you for the steps. Thank you for the super chat. Oh, Y'all making me feel so special. Happy. Yeah, it was like three days when they came and got everything, moved the furniture out of the apartment. They haven't. They have. As of now, they hadn't even finished cleaning the apartment. They haven't even finished cleaning the apartment. <laughs> I mean, they probably wouldn't have finished it later. But y'all going to hear Jessica tell you how long she was down in Birmingham before her untimely passing. Now, Miss um, Gale asked me to let them know that uh, it would be after the funeral. Um, you know, of course, she couldn't get that done. But it, it, was, it was about three days after they got all the furniture out. So did she grow up in Birmingham and then move? So she said... Listen to me. Listen to me. Jessica just said Mahogany was unalived about three days after they got the furniture out. It could have been three or four. Say it was three. She was pronounced unalive at two some in the morning on the 26th, which means that she was unalive on the 25th. Right? 25th is a Sunday. Three days. Sunday, Saturday, Friday, right? Saturday, Friday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, right? And according to what we just heard Jessica say, she was in Birmingham about three days before she was unalived. Okay? And Gail, this is how y'all got to look. 
when I say hidden in plain sight, Gail takes it to an elementary level. Okay? I'm going to show you how if it was three days she had to move out and she was gone, she was evicted, she was homeless. For three days she was homeless and out of her apartment before this happened to her. The first day of those three days will make Friday, which is the day that Mahogany called Gail from the screenshot Gail posted herself five or six times. Gail didn't answer at all. She didn't answer. And then her daughter said, come get me. I'm being kidnapped. You didn't answer your daughter. You gave your daughter for the fucking streets and to the wolves. Your daughter was homeless. So whoever is saying that her being homeless is not the but for causation to why she was in the situation, you need to, you, you really need to be dealt up with. Like if I seen you in person, you will, you will get dealt with. If I seen you in person for saying that. Okay, let me go down here to the message. Y'all got to look for context. This is true crime. You got to do proper investigation. It ain't not, you, you trying to duplicate me and you trying to say, so, oh, he joking and so I can joke. I got the right to do that because I got nothing but the facts and the receipts and I'm going to give the people the content and do it thoroughly. You, you just grifting. You won't get to come up to your platform and I hope she say some shit to you and I hope you break down and cry and realize that your mama worse than Gail, bitch. Fuck you talking about fuck nigga. Trying to wait on me to go live till y'all can get y'all some content. Let me show you. Boom. This is the message right here that Gail posted. And I'm always go to it. Right here. Let me do it this way. This is the message. All right. This is the message. Jessica just said she was unalive three days before she came. Three days after she was in Birmingham. She got in Birmingham on Friday. Friday afternoon. She called her. She called her 207. She called at 221. She called at 6, 11 p.m. By that time, it's Friday night. She with Taja and them. Got her tax money. These are some wild motherfuckers that don't want to do nothing but party. Monday through Sunday. But it's Friday. She might as well just go along to get along. The girl sleeping in her bed in pajama clothes and they coming in there starting all that shit because they high and they drunk. Your daughter called you Friday afternoon to tell you to come pick her up. She homeless. She don't want to go there. You failed your daughter right here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do another survey on this video. Please click the like. Please click the like. I'm going to do one more survey now that we all got the facts out and we all see what's going on. The survey is, should Gail take accountability? Because we already know she a liar. Should Gail Maddox, well, people probably don't know, should Mahogany Jackson, mother, Take accountability. Yes. Oh, come on. Yes. She's a narcissist. Oh, no. Mahogany was grown. Mahogany was grown with the daughter. Getting food stamps. They had no job. Her mama knew what type of situation she was in. What, you wanted to teach your daughter a lesson to go from receiving food stamps and having no job and over the next two months making enough money to get a new apartment because you just kicked her out of the subsidized apartment. <sighs> Thank y'all so much for being here. Uh, please take the survey and click the like button as well. Thank y'all so much. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Okay, let me get to the comments. Oh, so crazy. Mahogany closed her eyes and knew it was over. They made her get on her knees. 
I am an empath, diviner. I saw it in a dream. She was thinking about kittens for some odd reason. I guess that was her. Child, she was she put a picture of kittens in the photo. That's probably what you've seen because I didn't show that receipt. Yes, she should because mom. But it's like she wasn't grown. No, she wasn't grown. Mahogany wasn't grown. And that's another generation of curse. I can't wait. To, when you 18, you got to get out of my house. There's a typical generation of curse that we as black people face. So Mahogany 20 didn't teach her the foundation and, and what it means to be responsible. Because if you did, then your oldest daughter wouldn't have five kids and wouldn't look like that. She wouldn't dress like that to her sister's funeral. She wouldn't have all of her kids, like what Jessica said, coming and going out of Mahogany's apartment. She would have her own shit. Why did you have such a disdainment for this daughter to the point that where you want to grift off of her almost like it was a sacrifice? Move to where you are? She did. Um, it, she was down here, I want to say, two years um, because she, you know, she had gotten some trouble up there. Me um, and I made some enemies. Um, so her mom, you know, kind of wanted to give her a fresh start down here. Um, now the mom didn't stay here full time, but like I said, she would come visit, bring her daughter down here to see her, you know, spend the weekend, spend a week sometimes. So that's why they felt comfortable filming her getting beat up and unalive because she had moved away and came back. Is that what you're saying? I don't know if that, that's what made them feel comfortable, but I feel like they they felt like nobody was going to really, nobody was going to defend her or nobody was going to miss her. Um, I don't think they thought it was going to get as big as it did, and it wouldn't have if it wasn't for people like you. Um, other YouTubers covering it, um, I don't think it would have got as big as it did. But I feel like, like I said, once that happened and she didn't have this apartment, it set all this in motion because you don't have this here in Jasper. You can't stay with your mother because you don't want to follow the rules. She didn't have anywhere to go, anywhere to turn to. If she was starting, I mean, I'm going to say Mahogany was sometimes a handful. Um, I, I, You know, so many times that she got upset with me. I didn't argue with her. I gave her a lot of grace because, like I said, she's 20 years old. And, um, you know, I just overlooked a lot of it. She was the kind of person that she would cuss me out one night and then the next morning text me, like, I'm sorry, my bad. You know, I was having a bad night. Uh, she was just one of those people. Um, she wants what she wanted right then. You know how sometimes kids are. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what it was. I mean, um, her mom, a great person. I mean, a, a really great person. And she she loved mahogany. There's no question. But I feel like she, she didn't know what to do herself, if that makes any sense. Because... Uh, yeah, uh, children having children, but enough of that. Uh, please hit the like. Please hit the like and support the channel, right? So um, my content is extremely organic. I don't have to go and hound people down for interviews to outdo another content creator or to act like I'm better than them at all. That's not what we pride ourselves on over here or anything. Um, it was clear from this particular interview that Jessica was essentially, um, you know, copping a plea for the mother. And we got the information to prove that the mother is a liar. Jessica, according to the inter according to the, the the receipt that I have, okay, I mean, I'm going to show you guys, and I think we're going to segue into, and I'm pretty much probably, especially from the text message I got, thank you guys so much, we're going to have content in the morning, you know, um, but just to show you guys, if Jessica decides to, like, try to change up her story, it would be no different from, like, some of the suspects been giving pointers and ideas on YouTube in order to like fix their story for when the police come. Okay. So Jessica might have essentially uh cop the plea and switch sides because again, this is the internet. She's on the internet um speaking and she has to live with uh Mahogany's family. Um 
Jessica said this. Jessica said, but I feel like there might be more to that I don't know. You did everything and you did what you do. And I can't confirm or deny anything because I have children here. But I appreciate you for speaking for Mahogany. So uh, make sure you guys like this video, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have to cross-reference my receipts, my text message receipts um, from Mahogany's mother, my voice recording with Mahogany's mother, which has not been released, um, and what other people might say to protect themselves. So at this point in time, I think because I did it so organically, the only thing that you guys should trust coming from Jessica Mahogany's former neighbor as far as coming on YouTube to say certain things and protect different people's reputation, um, the only thing that you can trust is what she said the first time, which was on my platform, um, and we got leeway to believe. So I'm not going into the hood rat sector of things. I'm going to keep it truth and in light, okay? We're, we're going to keep it honest and integrable. I don't want to put nobody in danger, but Jessica, girl, you said what you said. And you're going to have to stand on it. Um, you're dealing with somebody who is not a conspiracy theorist, but someone who who's an artist. So it's easy for me to look at certain things and break it down from a psychological perspective. And that's what we're going to do over here. So make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and please make sure your notifications are set for always, okay? Greatly appreciate each and every one of you guys, all right? Um, please put some stars in the chat. If you've enjoyed this conversation, put some stars in the chat. Let me know the stars are in the building. Oh, wow. Someone gifted me a membership and I didn't know. Thank you for whoever did it. Thank you for, uh, did I miss, did I, uh, Deanna uh, or the moderator, did I miss any super chat, super stickers or gifts? Please let me know. Cause I did not intend to do that. I'd be into the content all the time, but shout out. I didn't even see no gifted memberships. I just seen other, oh, let me go back up. Let me go back up. I'm going back up. I want to see. I don't want to miss, but again, uh, I'm here to give you guys great content opposed to just, you know, collecting money or anything like that. But I will tell you the best way to support me is by liking this video, super, super, super chat and sending uh, anything that you can to uh, support the channel. Okay. Because, you know, Mr. Ratchet TV has put me on blast. <sighs> you know, he's paying people for interviews to try to silence me and act like he's a better content creator. You know how that shit go. Um, so he pointed out I only made $200 while he's making all of this money. But I have the facts and I have the truth and I have the better thought process. So if you guys want to support me and want me to continue to, I'm going to continue to talk about whatever I want to talk about regardless. But if you guys are looking at this and saying that this is pathetic to only make $200 out of two, 300,000 clicks and views, then please support me with a super chat, cash app, dollar sign, did not 007, and et cetera. And make sure you come back and like this video, no matter what I'm talking about. All right? <clears throat> My throat is getting dry, so I got to get up out of here. <laughs> Rack TV. I don't know the church and just her mom and her cousin's brother, aunt. Um... I am, oh, let me see these messages. Let me read a couple of them before I get out of it. Oh, that's a long message. It says, I am the mother of a 20-year-old. My daughter has a child. I do everything in my power for my daughter. Kids can be disrespectful at times. They say things that they don't mean out of anger. Exactly. Her mama knew that. You know, Mahogany's mom ran him away. I was wondering if he was at the front. Oh, you talking about the father? Yeah, she ran him away. He wasn't at the funeral. But see, I don't have those actual... I can only speculate as to that, but get it. But keep in mind, everything I've said about Mahogany's mother has been mere speculation until she started interacting with me and told five or six different lies about some of the truths that I already had and speculated about. <clears throat> so she's a liar. Um, yes, you are a star, baby. You are a star. You are a star. Joshua Stratton. The not you are coming up, babe. The content is lit. Thank you, Trinsetter T. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Uh, any more questions or concerns? I live in Florida, and this and this really touched me. I'm from Florida. My mom is from Alabama. I know them wicked. I know a wicked Negro when I see one. And before I before I even seen Gail open her mouth, I knew everything I need to know about it just by looking at her pictures, her Facebook. 
um, the body language with pictures and how she's sharing her granddaughter on her community wall, but you gave your grandchild away. You know, the receipts ain't the receipts are contradicting each other. This is real, this is real content, real life, not assumptions and switching facts to make a live. Right. She's backtracking her story. Wow. She's oh my gosh. Well, you know what? We're gonna have content in the morning. You know, uh, Mahogany Jackson's neighbor Jessica cop the plea because she's a, she's afraid of intimidation. Y'all didn't see the e email that I just showed you. She says she know more things, but she don't want to say too much because she has to live there and she has kids. She's scared. So Mahogany's mother and Mahog whoever is threatening and intimidating her and controlling her. So I believe now that you know this is happening. Jessica might just now be seeing and experiencing some of what Mahogany saw and experienced with the coercion and intimidation. And so now I think Jessica might be understanding Mahogany a little bit better. But as far as her coming on platforms and speaking, of course she's going to backtrack because just like Gail, she didn't realize and understand what information she was given and how I would process that and how me processing it in the way in which I do. That's why during the during the interview, I kept telling her, "Mahogany is not your responsibility. She belongs to us now. Meaning, you need to now separate yourself. You doing all this backtracking and stuff. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? Because <laughs> these people in the comments gonna eat you up. You can't go to somebody's platform who should be a registered SA for playing with somebody's daughter. We we gonna spend a block on him every day, and." Or somebody's platform. You can't do that. What you do on YouTube and what you say, you got to stick with it and add to it. There's no need to backtrack. Now we're looking at you funny. And we know that you're in a mind state of coercion. I know that. People are smart enough to know that. And we're going to talk about that in the morning. So I would never put my child out. She's driving my car. I pay for I am a mother. Right. She put out the car. Oh my gosh. Need a GoFundMe for Jessica to move to the next city and state. Well, Jessica has to tell me that. Why? Is it because of what I said or it's because of some child? Don't tell me she's trying to grift too. Gail only posted about her dad, how she missed him. What about her mother who was at the same cemetery as her daughter? Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. That's a shame. It's a shame. Oh, anyways, child, they, Gail finna be on the news and release an interview. I'm definitely gonna get with her on that. Um, that that boy over there, that ugly dude over there, that looked like a a, a low T cell having Jawana man. He be listening to my life in the morning. He gonna be repeating what I said over here and act like he's the author. That's what he do. That's what they do. I hate these Negroes. Um, you're doing a great job in breaking down your concern regarding this tragic case. Thank you. I appreciate you. If she's scared. Um, mm -mm. Line to, listen, I'm going to have to go through that and evaluate it. So... I got content in the morning. They eat out. Them bitches eating off of me because she came over here first. You think that them people, y'all don't understand how this shit works. You think them people going to sit there and let her backtrack after grabbing at our heart straight. That's one thing black people don't like. Nobody, as a matter of fact, nobody likes you grabbing at their heart string and then turn around and throw doodle in their face and say that you didn't mean it. She better get she better act rat pack TV to get her go find me to move and stuff like that. Cause <laughs> so he can pay her all she wants to say something different. That's what I'm saying. Um, you know. He had you Jessica interview on his uh 
he had he didn't play my interview. He had her on the platform. He didn't play my content because unlike him, I know how to get a copyright strike to go through like this, bitch. I would shut you down in real time for playing my shit. You better go ask them niggas. Um, but we'll we'll focus on that. I don't think I coerced Jessica into sending me all the receipts and the text messages. I don't think I coerced Jessica to click my link. As a matter of fact, I don't even do open panels. That was just once in a blue moon where she or anybody had the opportunity to click my link. She clicked the link on her own cognitive. So for her to backtrack on anything she said on my platform, I think she don't understand how that's looking to her. If you want to go for me to move, then you need to stand on the facts that you said over here and then tell us the truth of what you said in the email. You have kids and stuff like that. I, I, at this point, every, y'all all trying to grift off of her. All trying to grift off of Mahogany. Because if Mahogany's parents and family moved out of the unit in Jasper, you white, call the police. Call the police. Jasper's not Birmingham. It's a whole different world in Jasper, Alabama, and Birmingham, even though both could be considered, you know, dangerous or whatever, but they're from Birmingham. Unless, of course, Mahogany mother getting a call and saying she was kidnapped and tortured and on her way to pick up her brother, the same brother who took her child, was it all planned? It, does Mahogany mother really run deep? We see her taking pictures with these white folks, closing deals and all of this shit, getting all of this cloud and attention. You think it's a literal accident that she's a random person that's not on the news and now doing... It's not a literal accident. And mind you, the same time that this happened with Mahogany, they started promoting this theory of culture and riches on Twitter where they show all black people harming all of these white people. They promoted and pushed out the content with the black girl slamming the white girl head in the, car, uh, in the concrete. They pushed out a lot of cultural enrichment content to say and to paint a message that this is, what, this is the way all black people are. So while we are focused on mahogany and healing our community, white folks are looking at it as a distraction of us dealing with our own super criminals so they can paint a broad brush on all of us. That's what I see. So I wouldn't be surprised if Mahogany's mother is a part of some Eastern star Freemasonry and sacrificed her own daughter to push politics and agendas over in Birmingham internationally during an election year. I wouldn't be surprised if she's a sorority girl connected to Camilla Harris or Fannie Lewis. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe to go there, but that sounds very much conspiracy theory. I have to do more research before I say these things because I know a lot of y'all look at my facts and involved in this situation and look at it and look at my roasting gags and can sometimes conflate my opinion and my roasting gag as the fact. Um, but I always lead with facts and I always spin off of facts when it comes to roasting gags, so, which is what master comedians do. Um, so yeah, we're, we're definitely going to unpack what uh, Miss Thang is saying, what she's backtracking on. Um, and I don't think people are going to like that. I think I've created a, an extremely safe heaven for black women and men to come and express themselves and have fun and everything. And people are going to take offense to that. You know, people are going to look at her like she's who uh, my, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali was talking about. You know, maybe use a snake. Don't let one snake in. Don't, want, don't let them in because it's going to be a shit show. And now she's backtracking and they're going to essentially... Essentially, what she's doing is she's minimizing and reversing the truth. And that's where I have to continue. To, I have to continue to stand for the truth. And it's almost like extra work. And so I'm going to go nuclear if that's what happened. Hey, I just want you to know you are being caught up in a YouTube game with grifters who don't care about you mahogany nor her mother um the fact that you are reversing what you said what you initially Initially,
said on my platform leaves you extremely vulnerable. <sighs> Not my fault. I don't own nobody. I just say if you're going to moderate my channel, you friends with somebody I don't like, don't be speaking to them in my chat. Or get your bean up off. Uh, or get your, uh, I guess money is money. I don't know. Mm, 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 mm. Amen. Sonny Denat is doing a great job. Curry. I am. They out there getting paid and picking at me for not getting paid, child. <laughs> Y'all like, oh, everybody's doing, look at this. This nigga pulled it up. It's hard. That I would make it. I ain't made number $200 last week. Mm, 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 mm. That's what he said. He said he have 115K subscribers on YouTube. He's not going back and forth with me. You don't need to. The things that you're doing means that that's what you're doing. And you're looking like a fool. Okay? So anybody that want to support me and feel sorry that I only made $200 doing all of this work, then support me. If not, we still going to keep doing the work. We're going to keep doing the work. Yes, we are. Um, please hit the like. Please hit the like. Go to church. <laughs> I am not going to no church. I don't trust no niggas, no Christians, and no nobody. Oh, um, that's weird. Child, don't have, don't make me go nuclear in the morning. It's not, well, it is Saturday morning. It will be, if she felt like she was going to be targeted, she should have went on anonymously. <sighs> Maybe it's a grift. Everybody grifted. Mahogany is, mahogany is viral. In order for you to be famous, you need to be famous before you passed away. Mahogany is a trend. Mahogany is somebody that passed away that we want justice for. That all of these people want to exploit. I just want the truth. And I'm going to protect the truth. So the more y'all lie, the more I'm going to talk to correct y'all. Because I got all the receipts and I got all the truth. This is the platform to come to if you want to know the truth, the straight through facts. I'm not trying to incriminate people or give anybody any legal advice. And God knows I can do it better than any of them about these cases. Uh, I don't think Giovanni Clapp should be bailed out. So anybody that created a live stream, you know, saying to bail her out and she got the claps and trying to be funny and shit is not working out for you. Okay. Um, it's a little odd. She went on there. And then she went on here and then there now. I'm not tribalistic like that, but I will say, um, moving forward, um, I mean, I still have the right to say I had, I had the exclusive because now they're responding to and piggybacking off. All he does is profit off of someone passing away. Is nothing to brag about. Child, please. That is so crazy. Thank you, E. Oh, E, and welcome, 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 welcome. I didn't even know that you was a member. Thank you so much for being Thank you for the assets. Thank you for the super chat. Oh, Y'all making me feel so special. <laughs> uh, ways, I'm pretty much, uh, yes, rest in peace, Mahogany. You say, I'm not going uh, to do this and do this and do that. I can do all of that, but no. Mm, 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 mm. Anyways, I'm being targeted in Detroit. Girl, we pray for you. Please tell the police, get out of Detroit, do something, get away from them. <sighs> but I'm about to get up out of here. I appreciate you guys. I will see you in the morning. Um, I'm going to go and eat and go out. Bye.